Welcome back to Macro Dosing. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. I love Game Time. Game Time is the easiest way to get last minute tickets, the lowest price, the best seats. It's also super easy to use. It's got great user interface. We use them all the time here on Macro Dosing. Billy's gone to some baseball games. Big T, you going to any playoff games? Hopefully. You're going to use Game Time to get there, right? Obviously, it's the best way. It's playoff season, it's hockey season. We're going to be using Game Time, get into the garden, go to the Mecca. Mad Dog's using Game Time to go see some shows. Mm -hmm. We're all using Game Time. It's fantastic. Everybody loves it. If you haven't given Game Time a shot yet, what are you waiting for? Tons of fans hit us up on social. They tell us about the great deals that they're getting. We've been using it all year. It's so easy to use with amazing deals. You're going to love it. Football season this weekend. If you're trying to go to uh, a college football game, if you're trying to go to an NFL game, use Game Time. Download the app. Go to the account tab, create a login, and redeem code MACRO for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Some terms apply. Download Game Time. Last minute, last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Welcome back to Macro Dosing, the only podcast that you can find on Al Gore's internet or anywhere. We're back. We're in studio having a great time. Um, this episode is going to be about the DC Sniper. It's 20 years, 20 years ago. Just yeah. about on the dot. I said 10 years. That goes back to me thinking that I'm 27 years old. Wild story. I actually had never looked into it besides like random shootings. I knew there was two guys delved into it. This one's interesting. Yeah. It was like the very definition of random shootings and it was fucking terrifying. If anybody out there lived through it, I was in the DC area at the time. Um, life got turned like upside down for about... I couldn't imagine. Yeah, no, it was, it was crazy. Like everything... It was like a, a mini COVID. It was like a mini COVID hit in a micro targeted area where you couldn't like go outside. You couldn't do anything. It was very strange. Um, so we're going to get to all that in a second. But uh, yeah, welcome back. Speaking of Al Gore, yeah. do you know that there's now, uh, let me look at the exact statistics, but when Al Gore was giving his un uncomfortable truth speech. Inconvenient truth. Inconvenient yeah. truth. Uh, the polar bear population has quadrupled since then. Let's fucking go, That's Al awesome, Gore. right? Great job. Well, is it? For yeah. who? Not if you're a seal. Not if you're an Eskimo. Yeah. Is that Inuit? Inuit. Oh, or a polar seal. bear population. What's the population of polar bears in 2022? There's 31,000 polar bears now. Uh, what was the polar bear population in 2001? I don't want to go all conspiracy theorists, but this is a conspiracy theory podcast. I feel like there were a lot of animals growing up that we were told were endangered or made to believe that they were endangered. Mm hmm. That now it's like there's abundance of them. pandas. Pandas. I'm told that we have too many bald eagles. Yeah. Like we have an abundance of bald eagles. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm like looking at this. So uh, in 2008, when polar bears were designated as a protected species, the New York Times noted the number remained unchanged. There are more than 25,000 bears in the Arctic, 15,000 which roam within Canada's territory. So in 1984, yeah. So the. And yeah, so the polar bear population hasn't really gone down or just decreased. That was like a, like, hmm. huh, Al Gore. Al Gore. So what, what other animals were I, was I led to believe were in danger? Pandas though? were the big one, but China realized that they could use pandas as diplomacy. So they started breeding the fuck out of it's them. It's soft power. Yeah. They it's were an like, expansion of their- you're, you're telling us that these things that we used to kill can now be used to like- make alliances and spread Chinese goodwill. Mm hmm. Hmm. But, oh, keep talking, Billy. I oh, got, I got oh, mushrooms. You got some mushrooms in your mouth. Mm -hmm. I took my mushrooms this morning and my brain's feeling pretty good. I have to say everyone's saying that they didn't feel those. You know, what? I might double up. I might double up. I'm what? doubling up. Okay. So I just, I swallowed my lines made mushrooms from Jake Plummer. I think they work for me. I think they work. Uh, but I think I have to get to the end of the bottle before I can really tell. Right. Mm hmm. Well, you know what? I was on a lion's mane regimen before we got his good stuff. Yeah. And then the good stuff hit. The neural pathways were like developing, but that just bang. It is just bang. And now I'm super powered figuring out that Al Gore lied about the polar bears. Yep. Big they T. never declined. Big T, what other animals were you led to believe growing up were endangered? Um, I, I feel like I remember hearing a lot about elephants, rhinos. Uh, yeah. The, the rhinos. The rhinos, that's real, right? That's real. So yeah. Lions. There's been a huge increase in the polar bear population, but it hasn't really decreased. It they were so in the 1950s when there was abundance of hunting, they were down at 10 10,000 
and they were increasing till 2000 and then there's a little dip and now they're on the up and up so i don't know let's see what else al gore said it was going to happen that hasn't happened i'm just i'm very <laughs> woke about the entire thing about the whole endangered animals I mean, thing the thing is when all these big charity organizations like wwf a lot of those people in those organizations are making six figure salaries oh wow and so when you're donating all this money yeah. Like, yeah, it's going to the cause, but the cause also includes huge salaries, organizations. Uh, but w- wouldn't you make the argument that if you want somebody that's good at leading the organization, right. someone that's qualified right. and able to raise a lot of other money that you need to pay a, a competitive salary? True. That is true. You're not going to find that many people that are at the top of their game that are willing to work yeah. for, you know, 50 grand a year. Yeah. Poaching, poaching is the ivory trade. I th- th- That stuff's true. The ivory trade has absolutely t- had a huge uh, impact on rhino populations, elephant populations. Yeah, about that. About the, the the whole poaching of the ivory, I feel like that's one substance that could very easily just be faked. It's carrot. Can, can't you just make your own ivory and like tell people that it's from a tusk? Why do you have to... Is anybody going to like do the DNA testing and be like, wait a second, this, this actually isn't from an elephant. This is... This is plastic. Well, it is the whole, um, the, it's like a pearl or a diamond. Like we have lab grown diamonds now, but it's just not the same. Synthetic ivory seems like it would be a good market. Well, ivory is just keratin. It's just like what our fingernails and hair is made out of. Yep. I mean, I do understand. I, have you ever seen some of the whale, the whale carvings? Like the old, that's pretty cool. The scrimshaw stuff. Mm-hmm. Like back when they were whaling. I'm from the Northeast, so whaling culture is pretty built into a lot of the coastal towns and you know i have a lot of family from rhode island and uh newport used to be a a big whaling town Mm -hmm. martha's vineyard vineyard vines pink whale it's now like a preppy symbol now but like that whale used to mean something like hard men used to go out on the seas and do battle with these leviathons the pussification of whales yeah the pussification of whaling is something that has really (laughs) impacted uh no but have you have you ever read moby dick I actually have not. Moby Dick is so I was forced to read tons of crazy books in my, you know, uh, English classes. It's called high school. Yeah. But like we had to read like tons of stuff that I didn't really relate to. And the first book that they made us read that like really like got me going was Moby Dick. And even though it was like written in like old English, not really old English, but it really was sick. Mm -hmm. It was just about a bunch of dudes hopping on a boat and being like let's go fuck shit up yeah and like go battle these monsters and that was sick like this like anyway well no, i cultures- know i i agree with you i think that a lot of there's a, a shitload of like metal bands and yeah like, uh mastodon mastodon yeah yeah they base most of their aesthetic around moby dick yeah the and i do love Iron. i love like metal influenced sea, sh- sea shanties too yeah oh dude i mean sailing culture is just like it's a it's a different vibe. It's like an aggressive vibe. Like, mm-hmm. um, but what was I talking about? A scrimshaw, whalebone. So they used to do a lot of art on whalebone, and that actually is real. I found really cool. Like a lot of walrus tusks too. I think mm-hmm. the the northern uh, Inuit tribes and in, uh, you know, actually, you know, actually has a fascinating history. Greenland. I I was reading this mystery book about uh, the Netherlands and Greenland, and it was about um, uh, the the uh interaction between the tribes there in uh den actually it is denmark mm-hmm. it's denmark not the netherlands uh in their like interaction the like colonial aspect of denmark in greenland with the uh, native population so like there's tons of just really interesting history that just ended up getting inscribed on these um whale bones uh walrus tusks but what we're getting back to is the poaching ivory trade. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the ivory that gets uh, taken, especially rhino horns, the rhino horns doesn't get made into art. They get crushed up for um, herbal Viagra. That's okay. why. Yeah. 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 That's right. Di- it's the dick hard business. That's right. It's the hard dick business. You can you can sell anything to a dude by just telling him that it's going to make your dick hard. Remember when we thought uh, COVID was caused by pang pangolins that were getting shipped in no that was you wet market you said that no that is what everyone thought 
Everyone thought the pang. I remember the bats, but I remember you no, no, being pan, the only person. No, there was something about pangolins. Yeah, no, and I, bats. I, I do remember the pangolins, but pangolins, I, I also COVID. distinctly remember you're the only person that I heard that from. Yeah, researchers. This is February seventh, twenty twenty. Researchers in Guangzhou, China, have suggested that pangolins, long snouted anteating mammals used in traditional Chinese medicines, are the probable animal source of the coronavirus outbreak that has infected more than thirty thousand people and wreaking havoc worldwide. Yeah, yeah. It, everyone blamed pangolins first. Okay, I just remember hearing that the pangolins from you. Yeah, because I was the only one who is. You're deep in the research. I was deep in there. I. Anyway, let's not get into that poaching. To protect a. Actually, it's pretty wild. Um, the there there's actually employing a lot of uh, military contractors on these game preserves. So like to defend that'd be a sick job. Yeah, yeah a lot of. Uh, Iraq war vets are going over. It's like Secret Service, except for yeah, they're just so, for battling lions. poachers. You're protecting the lions. The lion population also not that bad. Pretty good. Yeah, that's good. that's refreshing. Tigers, to hear. tigers are bad. I'm just trying. To, I'm trying to think what else we could convince guys to buy if we were like it'll it'll give you a boner. I think um, guys would. Oh, oh, the vaccine. If you just said <laughs> side effect of of the COVID booster shot is you're gonna get rock hard boners. Actually, if you said like. Side effect of the COVID vaccine is you might be hard for the next two days straight. You'd have lines of dudes mm-hmm. getting the shot and then going straight to do Vegas. Do you want that? Yeah. Do you want? I I sure don't. To have a boner for two days? It'd be funny. Think about. Isn't that they, a they tell you if it gets to four hours, you need to call. Yeah, but think about the it's opportunities. Prior prism. It's a very serious thing. You you could lose your penis that way. Robert so two days you. seems like a bit much. Yeah. Uh, no. It, what they should do is they should just say they should mix a little like. A floater of Cialis in there. Cialis is the long one, right? Cialis is the one that. Well, that's the I think Viagra one. Yeah, I think Viagra you take like right before Cialis for daily use. Yes, Isn't that's, Cialis for like actual erectile dysfunction. Yeah, I Wait, think so. So Cialis, <laughs> you know the ones where they have like uh, the bathtub commercials, where there's like a guy and a girl sitting in separate bathtubs <laughs> overlooking like a giant valley and a you hill. You never know when the time's right. Yeah, for some reason they're always in a, in like separate bathtubs, but they should sprinkle just a floater of Cialis in the vaccine and just in the side effects, when they list the side effects, be like one of the side effects is uh, you. it's easier to achieve erections and then people just fucking line up around the corner for it. There's actually a ton of dudes who take, like dudes my age who take Cialis every day because it's supposed to have anti-aging benefits and testosterone boosting benefits just like who don't even have erectile. The, uh, this sounds like a soft confession by Billy. No, I, this isn't a soft confession. <laughs> it was just pitched to me on right, bodybuilding so it's forum. It's a semi-hard confession. It's like it's great for pumps in the gym. Yeah. <laughs> the problem with your hypothesis is that they'd have to tell you what is in the vaccine and or what its side effects are, neither of which they will do. Okay, got it. Yep. Got it. Hmm. Uh, so go I, get your fifth one, though. They're, they're available now. I think this is the, the <laughs> fourth shot. Fourth shot. I think it's I think we're on five because uh, no, you had you, you had, had the to get first, two originally. You had the first shot. And, then there was Omicron. Then there was Delta. Now well, there's just what? another no, booster no, this, for guess everything. What? No, this one applies to Omicron. and Delta. I'm pretty sure this is just the fourth. Guess, guess, oh, okay, guess just what? the fourth. 15 days to slow the spread. I'm just, I'm just fact checking you. Guess what? 15 days. Shocking that the worldwide pandemic didn't go away in 14 days. That's what it's kind of we crazy. Kind of crazy. So it uh, turns out if you had alpha gal exposure, you might get a negative reaction from the vaccine. So uh, can't get No, me. there's no negative exposure to the vaccine. <laughs> no, can't. can't You're vax a conspiracy me. theorist. You guys are going to get the, the warning tag slapped on this episode again. That's yeah, fine. But that, but that's We're bad boys. A, that's what get everyone buzzing. We're bad we should boys. say something really controversial. Uh, <laughs> I think I think just saying that the vaccine will give you rock hard erections. Yeah, <laughs> these guys are spreading inform- misinformation. What are they saying? They're saying the vaccines get you hard as yeah. fuck. No, like you could you could get guys to do anything. You get guys to seriously take. Whatever you like, vitamins. I mean, it could get you hard as fuck if it puts you into rigor mortis. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good J- point. Is JJ Watt vaccinated? Good question, Billy. I would assume so if hmm. he's playing in the NFL. Hmm. You would know if he wasn't. Hmm. TJ? Is TJ vaccinated? Are you saying the vaccination ruptured his pectoral muscle? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Definitely not steroids. Probably just a vaccine. It's actually pretty... Seeing him cry on the podium was really sad. Yeah. Um, because it, you, you saw him talking about his kids and it's like, he's just like, he really, so you know. JJ needs, he needs to have an ablation done to his heart because he's he's gone into AFib 
And so he had it like shocked back into rhythm. Yeah. And it's probably going to happen to him again. My dad actually just had that. So my dad had ablation. He had an ablation done and then he had to have a second ablation. It's like a very minor surgery, but you probably can't play football after you have. So what they do is they go back in and uh, they go into your heart. And they they just fucking nuke all the bad cells that are making it miss time and beat too fast. So they get rid of the bad cells, and then you're fine for a while after that. One of the real problems is that uh, JJ probably definitely for whatever reason has an enlarged heart because all the charity does. Okay, yeah, okay, and uh, <laughs> all the like you know how much he loves his fan base mm-hmm. and everything, but with that. You know, there can be pooling and this is, you know, and because when one of your, uh, one of your, what's it called? Caverns? Chambers. Chambers gets very large. People forget. I know a lot about hearts. Yeah. You, Cause you took that class. Yeah. So then the blood can pool in those chambers that are very large if they're mm-hmm. enlarged. And then that's how you get like a clot in the stroke. Yeah. I, I but that's the I'm real. I'm just going to push back on one thing. I don't think that we know. Yeah, whether JJ don't. has an enlarged heart or not, besides the charity work. Also, someone with that much muscle, like the heart is a muscle. So if you yeah. do anything to grow your muscles, your heart's going to grow too. But you don't, you can't do like weightlifting and resistance training. With your heart, that's called cardio. I don't think it necessarily makes it. Does that make your heart bigger if you do a lot of yeah. like distance running? No, not this. I mean, like people who exercise more have stronger hearts and have larger hearts they're larger like yeah they get like the muscle larger? the muscle is I, larger i think the muscle gets more efficient i don't know if it gets larger i might i might be wrong on i that. know we actually have no idea what we're talking about that's absolutely a, zero that's a great idea. disclaimer we should just put that at the top of every episode yeah we have no oh by the way oh, seabiscuit had a giant heart yeah it was like five times the size of a regular actually we shouldn't heart. be um this is bro football docking jj's heart i just want J, jj's a great guy i've met him before uh you know, I want him to live long so his kids can see, he can like, you know, live so he can his watch kids his kids and like go football. to the Hall of Fame. And I want him to become, I want JJ to become like, you know, one of these Sunday morning commentators so he can be in our life forever and just be a classic like football guy who like brings in like the lasting legacy of the NFL. I want him to become like a Terry Bradshaw or a, mm-hmm. or a, oh, I'm, how long? long? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I want JJ's kids to be the next Longs. Yeah. Next Long family. Yeah. And by that, I mean I want JJ's son to become a giant pothead <laughs> and get and get unusual Imagine. tattoos Imagine. and and fucking try to steal our ideas of podcasting from Waffle Houses. JJ, I Before mean, we do it. Yeah. Do you think JJ wants to ever smoke weed? Steal. Has JJ smoked weed? Of course, yeah. Yeah, in that beanie period in Wisconsin, that show. Yeah, yeah. JJ probably, well, he's a pizza delivery guy, right? Yeah, for a so little bit he, yeah every pizza delivery guy smokes weed also i think no i think jj like got high in his dorm his freshman year and his buddies were like watching boondock saints They're like yo you got to get high and watch this movie and jj was like i don't know i got football practice pretty early tomorrow <laughs> like come on jj just give it a shot he's like okay but don't tell anybody and he probably took two hits and then got really paranoid He's like, oh my god, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I got, I got, I gotta wake up so early tomorrow. Oh my god, oh my god! And then he went home and, and called the cops on himself. That sums up uh, my college weed experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and we and that wasn't mids. Um, so uh, before we get into our main topic, yeah, Billy, what's this? You're about to point at me. I'm trying to do a, an elegant segue here. Okay. Well, I have to just correct myself. Made some couple wrong claims on the uh, Nord Stream pipeline. Okay. Uh, turns out what it's not running currently. It wasn't running when that happened. It was been shut off for a long time in the strategic um, importance to Russia. is not current. It's not a current lifeline, but could be a lifeline in the future when they, they needed gas in the European winter from Germany. Let me just clear that up. Did you did you see the guy on Bloomberg who started to say that like the US did it and they took him off the air? Yeah. I mean Russia it's also it was also strategic for Russia to also do it. Um but you know this is a conspiracy podcast there's evidence that goes both ways. You know, I kind of honestly America should be able to blow up a pipeline and flex on everybody. I like that. 
Okay. It's not a bad thing. All right. So Billy's saying thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Turns out Joe called up Putin using the private line. Yeah. You know the private line they talked about during the Cold War? That's just like back channel. It's a red phone. Yeah, the red phone where he just calls Russia and he, he So so you're saying Biden slid into Putin's DMs. Basically, directly. And was like, Hey, can you just blow up your own shit? No, no, Let he, me see a pipeline pick. It turns out like Russia was like apparently uh Russia was like readying nuclear like threatening like nukes like kind of crazily i won't find these specifics but like turns out someone from the state department like some communication from the white house to russia and russia was just like whoa whoa slow down buddy like chill out bro like it's not that serious from whatever was said the white house scared the shit out of them and they said that the u.s needs to chill out okay so we just put Apparently. the fear of god into them until yeah, they blew up their even, own shit yeah I like that explanation. Sure. No, that had nothing to do with the pipeline. Like they just called them up and said, "Yo, we're gonna fuck you up." We just buzz their tower. If you use, yeah, if you use a, a tactical nuke, like turns out they were like, "We are going to destroy Russia." The name tactical nuke is so hilarious because it's it's still a nuclear weapon, but it's just somebody saying like it's a small. Yeah, it's, it's just a, like a minor, a minor it's atom. It's so bomb. unnecessary. A tactical nuke is so unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Like, you could. Use a not nuke like the the mother of all bombs, I think is less uh, destructive, or is more destructive than like the small tactical nuke that they talk about. Mm -hmm. Like that the mother of all bombs, if you don't remember, that's what we blew the fuck out of uh, that uh, underground Taliban base back when we were going real hard in Afghanistan mm -hmm. and like blew up like a mile underneath the bunkers. Uh, the cool Moab. Video. Yeah, the Moab. The Moab. Bombs. Okay, so I want to get into real quick. Um, man, you know what? Before we jump into this, fuck it. I'm on board with Christmas abs. Let's do it. Christmas abs. We're all on board. It's a thing. It's a thing. It's officially a thing. I didn't want it to be a thing, and I'm probably not going to get them, but it's, it's now officially a thing because a lot of people have been hitting me up and being like, let's do Christmas abs. Fuck it. I'm doing Christmas abs. Step one, I cut out sugar. There you go, belly football. I cut out sugar. Sugar's gone. I'm done with sugar. Fuck sugar. Except all my homies hate sugar. Okay, Big T. All right, here we go. It was an accident, though. It was. I accidentally had sugar last night. What'd you have? I tried to do the right thing. We we're at the the dozen live taping down in Philadelphia. Shout out Philadelphia. It was a great time. Shout, you out, can, shout out Philly. You can watch the episodes um, online probably right now, or at least one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, Big T. Me and Fran were coming back, and we stop at the uh, the Dunkin' Donuts because that was the only thing that was open in the Philly train station. That pretzel stand that I love so very deeply was closed down. Yeah, you told me there were elite pretzels. Great pretzels in the Philadelphia Amtrak station. Man, they were closed. They were. It wasn't even that late either. That was bullshit. I agree. So we stop at the Dunkin' Donuts, and I can't get anything on the menu because it's a Dunkin' Donuts. What's on the menu? Everything sugar. has sugar. Everything is, excuse me, everything has carbs. I get a cup of black coffee, no cream. What time was this? No at? sugar. Nine thirty. Yeah, ish. it's about right. Yeah. I get, uh, I, I start perusing the menu, and there's really nothing except for snack and bacon. Mm -hmm. And the snack and bacon at Dunkin' is it's a very sad meal to get because it's just, it's just a bag of bacon, like They're, microwave. Bacon. Yeah, not even good bacon. It's either. just bacon that they stick into like a a piece of paper yeah. and then they hand you the paper filled with bacon mm, it's snacking it's like you're buying the worst if it was if it was drugs it would be the most stepped on disgusting drugs that you'd ever buy it was stepped on like bacon. the cheapest drug it was ste it stepped on bacon it's like wilty and it's in just this like piece of deli paper and then i i take it out of the deli paper and instantly i get hit with the smell and there's maple syrup on there it's like maple sugar bacon. Coated in maple syrup. Like it's pooling how, at the bottom of this little plastic. How do you guys bag. like your bacon? I like it Burnt. pretty crispy. Like mm -hmm. medium crispy, I'd say. I told I told PFT this last night. If I'm ordering bacon at a restaurant, I tell the waitress I want it like a Frisbee. I want to touch it on both ends and have it break. Mm -hmm. Same. Because if you tell them extra crispy, everybody says that. They don't listen. They don't take it seriously. You have to tell them something that they'll remember. So, so I tell him frisbee. Uh, that's a smart idea. So if, if I got that from my cousin, uh, you can he use that frisbee. You can use that tip. <laughs> you got to say frisbee. You yeah, can't be like a ruler because they remember a frisbee. They probably never heard it before. So right. you're using psyops on your servers. 
It's I, smart. Ju- I just want them to remember because if you tell them extra crispy, they come out with regular ass bacon and you're like, what the fuck? They hear extra crispy 20 times a day. Yeah, that's Big T's uh, menu hacking. But yeah. you might as well just like, it could be anything if it's that burnt. But no, but they don't actually, I mean, they're not going to go crazy, with, but they remember this guy wants it crispy. I like, I like it. I like it still formative of, of bacon. I like it hard, but I don't like it floppy. Like yeah. I want my bacon. Exactly. My, Are we like, still talking about bacon? Yes. Okay. I like no one likes soggy bacon. Like remember some of those like. Oh, here's I, I have a cousin, and every single time we go out to eat, she orders bacon. She requests it to be like medium oh. rare type cooked, like wilty. Well, like I like soft, thick under, bacon, undercooked bacon, and it's the the server always looks at her and is like, Are "You sure?" And she's like, "Yeah, I'm sure." I like thick bacon, uh, but hard like. The reason I like thick bacon because like, you get more crispy. I feel like with some of the other bacons that like, you get crispy, it's just like shriveled up pieces of bacon that you can't even eat. That's like not even bacon. It's just like it's mid. Yeah, it's mid. It's so like I, ash. So I, I unfortunately, I had to do this bacon. That's the only thing they had. I had. I only ate half the bag of it, but um, I'm, I'm on board Christmas abs today. I've had no sugar. I had a cup of black coffee. I've got salad coming for lunch. No dressing. So during the week, I'm gonna go fucking hard on this Christmas abs thing. I'm gonna have abs like you wouldn't believe come Christmas time. Like Six these? pack. Don't don't show me your I abs. Need to get picture. back there. You you clearly. Well, everyone thinks I'm belly football, but I used to clearly be shredded like sexted in the day. somebody with those with that no, ab I didn't. picture. I did not. It's such an abs sexting picture. No, it's not. Show it to the camera. No, no. It's, Show it to it's the camera. Us too. Yes, that's no. a, that's a sexting picture. That's not a sexting. Billy picture. just showed me an out of context sexting. picture. <laughs> that is not true. Yes. You can't you can't retain your sexting pictures for well, when you're future looking, use when you're in looking, non-sexting environments. When you're looking like this, like when you you know anyway. No, you can't I used to be you can't trail off. The thing is, I don't want to be a fuckboy and post the photos of me when I was absolutely shredded so people take fitness advice from me because then we get totally dragged, but I just need someone else to vouch for it. Okay, you used to have abs at, at one point. We're and gonna they're gonna see the results when we all have Christmas abs. Yeah. I'm going to have the best Christmas abs ever. Okay, I'm going hard on this. Are you really? Yeah, I'm I'm actually, we're getting cut as fuck. Cut as fuck. I'm just trying to get cut. Like, we're not even caring about strength gains. We're getting cut. We're going for low body fat. It's going to be insane. The best part about this entire thing is I, I might just abort Christmas abs Thanksgiving. Because you can't. You can't. Just, you just only eat turkey. Your body is is probably at its best. What? Like if you look around, no if you look around society in the United States, when are we at our most healthy? What day? Like what month of the year? Summer. You think before summer? Because you're doing the most activities during no. summer. I think March. March. I don't know. I think March. March or April. You're still coming out of hibernation. Or April because you're getting ready for the summer. Actually, then, this is a great idea say, that we're going hard during the holidays because even I, if we I think don't it's Memorial Day weekend. Goals, I think it's Memorial Day weekend. Yeah. That's when you're at your fittest. Yeah, and it's because you just no, if Labor you just Day. drink beer all summer. Then no, it's not but, but you're, you're still you're still burning more. Like I have a I have a whoop band. I've been tracking my activity for the past two years, and you're always burning more calories during the summer because you're always doing more stuff. Well, it's also because you're like, outside more, outside more, and sweating more. Yeah. But you're also during the summer. That's you also eat like shit and, and drink you, a lot I drink, more. Yeah, I drink a lot this. Yeah, summer. but you're still outside when you're playing. You when you're drinking during the winter, you're like you know, like Russians with vodka in the cold winter. Are you th- are you like insinuating that like we're doing a photosynthesis thing with the sun? I think he is. I think there's some vitamin D benefits. But like for example, you're at a darty. You're running around. You're playing games. You're playing die. <laughs> Yo, Arian. Quick question for you. When, um, actually, let's start with this. How do you like your bacon? Uh, not like black, but like, you know, in the middle. Like, facts. Mm hmm. Hard, but not floppy. I don't mind floppy bacon, but I prefer it a little crispy. I like a crunch, but I don't like, I don't like a burnt. Because we're talking about getting on the, on the Christmas abs train. I, I think I'm officially fully in on Christmas abs. You can absolutely have bacon in your diet. Yeah. I had bacon last night, but it was covered in like maple syrup and shit. That might not be the best. Yeah. It wasn't my call, though. That's the only style that they had at Dunkin' Donuts. That's the only thing on the menu that I thought I could have. I did not realize it would be covered in sugar, but 
I'm trying. I'm trying. I haven't had any real sugar in like a day, like a full day. That's what I'm talking about. Let's do it. Last night we were getting ready for the trivia show, and they brought in this some spread of pizza. There was like four pizzas. There was a bunch of unhealthy stuff. I had a salad. I had a salad last night. So I love it. I love it. I mean, just imagine you know, if, you, if you discipline yourself, you turn to like PFT, the, the sex symbol. You know what I mean? I'm love not. It. I'm not a sex symbol right now. Not right now. No, you're a little fluffy. I'm fluffy. I'm cuddly. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm cuddly. Like, Some people like cuddles. I love cuddles. Uh, Arian, I got a question for you because we had some bad news that, that broke yesterday kind of overnight into this morning. Somebody that you're kind of uh, intimately involved with uh, your careers. Blake Bortles retired from the NFL. So he walked away from the game on top and he said, I'm, I'm not coming back. And uh, I know you played against him. You guys were fierce competitors for a while. Texans, Jaguars games. They were always appointment television. What's your Act. biggest Blake Bortles memory? Oh, man. I mean, not to disrespect him. Um, I just don't have that many memories of, of Blake Bortles. Um, you know, I was on offense, so I didn't really see him that much. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember, I just remember him being number five. Yeah. <laughs> Respect. De defining <laughs> legacy. Respect. Number five. The number five. I mean, you, know what I don't, you know what I don't get about Blake Bortles is how did he become like the meme for like, I don't know, people to m make fun of quarterbacks. It would, but he's like, he's like, the, it's like, he's like the quarterback that everybody roots for being good, but he's not good. And it doesn't matter how bad he is, like he's good. I don't know if that's a fair way to characterize it. He, uh, the man has the third highest yards per carry average of all time for any quarterback. Did you know that? Michael Vick. Uh, yeah, point taken. Yeah. Like Michael yeah. Vick, it's Michael Vick, then some guy from like 1950, and then Blake Bortles is number three, more than Lamar Jackson. Does he reach mm. the minimum carry yes, threshold? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. 250 carries. Yes, he does. Thank he you for asking. He had 250 carries? Yes, he did. He <laughs> said, thanks for asking. Number three of all time. That's Blake Bortles. And Blake Bortles, I, till the day that I die, I will say the NFL fucked Blake Bortles. The NFL. I'm listening. Convince they, me. They fucked him over. The biggest case of highway robbery I've ever seen in my life in a football game. I've never seen you this serious. Please go. Well, I'm wearing my Blake Bortles jersey right now, and I'm pumped up. <laughs> oh, that's who that is. <laughs> yeah, the, I think I might be the only person in the world, actually, that owns a Blake Bortles Packers jersey. He was on their practice squad for like three weeks. So uh, in 2017... No, 2018. It was the 2017 season. 2017, um, 2018, Blake Bortles defeated Ben Roethlisberger in the playoffs. I think it was 45-42. to 42. Jaguars advance. They move on to play against the mighty New England Patriots in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Tom Brady at home, Foxborough. I think it was like negative three degrees. It was a classic New England day. Blake Bortles goes up there. Blake Bortles beats Tom Brady and the New England Patriots in Foxborough. It's 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter. I think there's 10 minutes left. Miles Jack forces a fumble, picks it up, runs it back for a touchdown. Refs blow the play dead because they say Miles Jack was down. He was not down. Upon further review, he was not down at all. But guess what? They blew the whistle. They can't retroactively go back and say, okay, we're going to let him return this, this fumble for a touchdown. The Jaguars would have gone up 27 to 10. They would have gone to the Super Bowl. They beat the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game in New England. They would have gone to the Super Bowl where the Jaguars had the best defense in the league that year. That defense was no fluke. They would have played against Nick Foles and the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl. They would have beaten the Philadelphia Eagles in the Super Bowl. Blake Bortles would have been a Super Bowl champion quarterback. That's what Blake should have been. But Roger Goodell was like, no, no, no. I can't have my golden, the golden goose, Tom Brady. I can't have him not make the Super Bowl. We've already got Nick Foles in the Super Bowl. We need, we need a superstar. He knew going into that game because I, I believe in the NFC, it was going to be Case Keenum against Nick Foles in that championship game. Goodell knew that he needed a superstar quarterback from the other team if he wanted ratings. So he put his finger on the scale. Miles Jack wasn't down. Blake Bortles should have been 
in the Super Bowl. He should have won the Super Bowl, and his career would be talked about in a manner much more befitting of how it should be talked about respectfully. So that's how the NFL fucked Blake Bortles. Um, you are so passionate about that. I respect it, man. What year was that? I think it was 2017, 2018. I'm trying to right, remember. Sometimes okay. because the playoffs, you know, they start in the next year. That gets confusing for me. Um, I'm just going to Google right now. Patriots, Jaguars, AFC Championship. Yeah, I have no recollection of that because I, I retired 2016. And so I didn't watch football for like two years. I don't watch any football. So like, absolutely. I'm like, yo, the Jaguars was the AFC Championship. Yep. It was it was January 21st, Damn. 2018. And the Jaguars legitimately had a great defense that year. Like they were, yeah. they were ferocious. Ramsey. Actually, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Um, Dante Fowler was good. Consistently, consistently, yeah. they were probably my least favorite team to play. Consistently, they always. I'm talking about. They always had a, a really, even like when Jack Del Rio was there. Um, always had a really stout defense. Very good uh, interior defensive linemen. Their linebackers were always coming downhill. I used to hate going against the Jacks, but now I'm thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Huh. It's because they practice against Blake Bortles every day. <laughs> That's 100% correct. <laughs> iron sharpens iron, right? I, I used to follow that uh, Blake Bortles account, the parody. Yep. Uh, where they, he would just list off like Blake Bortles stats. It should, would be so funny. Also, Blake, was he was a good friend of ours, or he still is a good friend of ours, but he was right at the beginning on part of my take. He was one of our first guests, and he was always fun to talk to, and, and we loved him. He loved us, and... We kind of our our relationship developed uh, on the podcast with him over the years, and he's just like the coolest guy. He's just a normal guy to hang out with. And you um, could say Blake Boros jump started part of my take. You could, you could absolutely say that. There's there's a few different people that I would say in in the first six months of part of my take that really made the wheels start to turn on it and, and build it into the podcast that it became. So um, Blake Bortles is absolutely right at the top of that list and he's also yeah we joke around a little bit about him sometimes because he was never a superstar he was never out there throwing well he did throw five touchdowns in a game one time but he was never throwing six touchdowns in a game and uh you know people like to clown on him but at the end of the day he was just like a normal guy that was very very good at football and i think that's why we liked him so much so that's most guys by the way (laughs) yeah it's true like sometimes <laughs> so we do put NFL players on a pes- pedestal. Sometimes it's like they're just they're regular people, regular dudes that can run fast, jump high, throw, catch. Except for Tom Brady, he's not a re- he's a he's a weirdo. Arian, I actually saw a video recently. Uh, it was you were featured in it, but it was Brian Cushing's mic'd up. Uh, I think it was against the Browns. Uh, he mm-hmm. was mic'd up, and that was the game that he headbutted a guy without a helmet on, and he was bleeding mm-hmm. out of his face can i can mm-hmm. i just like ask what what was it like like when that happened do you remember it happening and when he was running around the sideline just saying crazy shit acting crazy was kind of like oh yeah that's just like brian being brian or or was there like was anyone concerned or was it just like no, no that's just day to day no kush was like i used to fuck with him because like kush was way funnier than what he marketed himself to be like he's actually a very intelligent funny cat but like he marketed himself to be like kind of stiff i don't know i never understood it and like he was like a little um eccentric as far as like his pregame stuff and he's like you know the crazy white guy stick he had that a little bit but he was like a very funny like hilarious cat and i was like yo if you ever marketed yourself like this you could capitalize off it but he just never did but it was he was kind of, he was a normal dude actually he wasn't as he wasn't as crazy as as that shit that i mean that shit was i don't know what the fuck that was i i never really asked him about it i'm like you never <laughs> you just don't, like, you, you just don't ask him, like this man's bleeding out of his face and you headbutted a dude yeah. without his helmet and you're just like yeah yeah we just, just i don't think he headbutted him i think he was just like trying to get in his face and he didn't think buddy was gonna go forward Cause he had a helmet on and he didn't, and I just think he was—he just didn't back down, which is not the smartest thing in the world. But, jeez, yeah. yeah so R- R.I.P. Blake. Um, I'm glad that you had so many good, fond mem- memories of playing against Marion. That's that's touching to hear. Yeah, I mean, well, we weren't like super good all throughout his career too, so I can't I can't knock it. But you know, I just, oh, I also remember they had them ugly ass helmets too. 
the the black mixed with like gold. Those were probably the worst uniforms in the NFL's history. Sports. They were pretty bad. I mean, worse than their color rush. Which one was their color rush? The mustard puke yellow. Ooh. I, I yeah, the the color rush, the mustard puke yellow. They were like baby poop yellow. I think Blake actually said himself. Well, just yeah. their uniforms in general. But the thing is, they're they so have, bad. They're, they're good. older ones, like with uh, uh, early or late, late days of Fred Taylor, early days of Maurice Jones Drew, like them shits. I loved them. Mark Brunel, them shits was fire. Yeah, I I think the um the color rush ones. I think Blake said those are the ugliest jerseys in sports. I think he one time oh. said that, and then his marketing team was like, yeah, for the Jaguars, they're that. like, hey Blake, can you? We're trying to sell some merchandise here. Can you not? Can you not say that out loud? Yeah, I'm looking at sh- those are those are dog shit. Oh wow, like I don't know why you would go with those colors. You have a beautiful color in teal and black. Like work off of that. Like why make that a? Fuck? That's just Did they ever do it was when it was when colors. Nike took over the NFL contract and they tried to get like wacky with some of them. That um, ain't it. That yeah, they really not it. they really stepped out. So Christmas abs is a thing. I would like. What about? I was thinking about this yesterday. What about liposuction? Is that still a thing? Are people still getting liposuction? I've been thinking about liposuction. How much does liposuction cost? A couple thousand. Like two thousand? Not bad. I think it depends on where you get it. What is liposuction? They suck the fat out of you. You know what I found out? You can tell when you get lipo, though. Like, if you look at someone who has liposuction, you can tell. How? It just doesn't look quite... (laughs) It doesn't quite look natural. I'll send you... I'm going to... I have a TikToker in mind right now who got liposuction. Okay. Um, nothing wrong with it, but you can kind of tell, I like found, it doesn't look completely natural. I found out that there's like this procedure where they take all the fat from your stomach and waist area and put it in your ass. I heard yeah. about that. Yeah. Is that BBL? That's yeah. BBL, Wait, it? are you just hearing about BBLs? Yeah. I mean, I didn't know. I thought, I thought it was like, I didn't know they were moving it. Yeah. I thought they were like, it was implants. Like lipo and implants, I didn't know they were actually like, oh, let's just take this and put it there. No, because it's it's not like a boob job where they're putting like silicone. Yeah, they're literally taking fat and redistributing it. Yeah, and then you can't well, sit can't, for like three weeks. Uh, this is kind of lit. I ain't gonna lie, I, I've never really looked at liposuction before. So they just they just suck the fat out. Yeah, they suck the fat out. I mean, <laughs> Who, I want it so bad. Who's going to do it for Christmas apps? PFC, I would go with you. I don't hate it, man. I'm just saying, I don't hate it. Do you think what, are can... the, what are the cons? There's got to be some cons. The, what are the cons. I think the consequence is that your fat cells can't maintain since you're basically they're taking out fat cells, which is supposed to feed your muscles, feed your organs to like uh, function. Since you're taking them away, like you're just not going to have the same body functioning. Like you're gonna get probably lethargic easier because those are fat cells you were born with. Because everyone's born with fat cells. Hold on, let me look up the cons of like. Oh, they're not taking away all your fat, just oh, like in, think, like targeted areas, right? Yeah, they they can target areas. It's not like when you work out. If you work out, you have to burn fat all across your body, right? You can't yeah, target. You can't there's lose no such thing. Yeah. You can't lose fat in like a specific area. Yeah, like doing abs doesn't make you your stomach. Like it does. Build, you're not going to lose weight doing abs on your stomach just because right. you're doing it on your abs. Okay, so disadvantages of liposuction include um, contour irregular- irregularities, which I don't really know what that means. Um, you get lumpy. Your skin may, may appear bumpy, wavy, or withered due to uneven fat removal, poor skin elast- elasticity, unusual healing, um, results affected by future pregnancy, weight gain, and aging. You don't have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Um, must commit to a healthy li- healthy lifestyle after treatment, which we will. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> we really so, which we will. <laughs> I think we they will. They won't do the procedure on somebody if they're going to just gain all the weight back. Yeah, some like it says you may need to lose weight before surgery. Like if you if you're a woman getting a breast reduction, they usually ask you to lose weight before to make sure it's not just because you have excess weight. Because yeah, so it's look, if you're a girl, your like, boobs can vary in size. Yeah. If, yeah, I don't think this is like a a quick fix for like like really really like a, a lot of fat. Yeah, like a no. lot of fat. I think it's just, just and this is basically this. What sounds like if you're right on the break of Christmas abs, this will just push you over. The <laughs> yeah, that's what it sounds like. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, that's what it sounds like. 
All so, bodies are beautiful. So <laughs> you, you a lot can of, also die from the procedure. Yeah. yeah. I That's mean, you can kind of die from an appendectomy. You can die from anything. Stomach stapling. Get What's you. that? I don't need to stomach staple. Where they staple, though. staple your stomach so you get full faster. Or like, a, I mean, that's no. like what a gastric bypass. I mean, gastric bypass yeah. isn't stomach stapling, but they like just make your stomach smaller. So a lot of, uh, so the reason why a lot of like bodybuilders when they go off gear, besides the hormonal imbalances, they get super fat, is that HGH increases. Not only does it build up your muscle, but it builds up your fat cells as well. So okay. um, you have more fat cells, just like you have more muscle cells after you're done. Uh, using it but then because of the hormone irregularities your fat cells blow up mm -hmm. and your muscle cells don't and then just get fat like so when how when like bodybuilders stop bodybuilding they just kind of become big people yeah like have you ever seen have you ever heard that like myth that like muscle just turns to fat like yeah. why would i bulk up and get big muscle just, right, just gonna turn, turn to fat? fat it's like no yeah it's weird. Tell them, Billy. No, I just need I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of in on this lipo stuff. Are you about to get liposuction? Are we all going to get liposuction? It sounds way Are you about to get a no. BBL? Are you <laughs> I'm not going to put it. I'm not going to put the fat anywhere. Well, I'll put it in put a jar. Imagine I'll send Aaron, you my fat, Billy, so you can Aaron eat it. Aaron wants it caked up. Get healthy fat. <laughs> eat the fat. <laughs> That's like that scene from Fight Club where they take I the seen, fat. I haven't seen Fight Club. You've never seen Fight Club? Well, they take mm -hmm. the fat and turn it into soap. Hmm. I would do lipo, though. You can that's get lipo so on your chin, too, and just have, like, a chiseled jawline. No, nah, and see, that's, that's to me, that's where it starts getting wild. Like, I just feel like if you've got some, like, around the midsection, mm -hmm. or if women, I don't know why you'd want to lose some on the thighs or the, or the back, but if you was, but if you want to take a little off, that's, it sounds like trimming. It sounds like human trimming. It You're is like trimming. human trimming. Mm -hmm. It does. It's the easy way out, for sure. But yeah. I'm not above taking that easy way. Out. Yeah, but I'm but I'm not either. No, but I'm, I'm gonna look a little deeper into this. There's Christmas much abs. better. I'm a little quicker this year. Thanksgiving uh, abs question. I mean, yep. what, what do you think takes more? <laughs> what do you think takes more time off your lifespan? Getting lipo, or maybe like running a low grade, like L carnitine or weight <laughs> loss type shot injection. I don't know what the second one is. Like is that, that, what that you one PFT? sounds way worse. Yeah. Actually, no, no, I don't think like lipo... a little bit of a, like a peptide or something, just like to kick start your hormones and like actually make you lose the weight. I don't think. Yeah, that sounds. Do you, sounds do worse. you have chemicals you can give me? <laughs> you don't want any of these chemicals. <laughs> but I don't think lipo. I mean, if done well, I don't think it takes years off of your life. Well, probably it takes numbers off the scale. Well, why? Why would that take years off your life? Well, think about it. you're going, undergoing a major surgery that's going to shock it's, your that's system. That's not major. That's, it's that's not, not major. major. It's like a procedure. Yeah, they suck fat out of you. That that's, that's not major. Uh, that's just minor. That's like laparoscopic that's my, surgery that's, to you guys. Yeah, that's that's definitely minor. That's not major. You don't have major, major scars from it or anything. You think it's worse do than getting? Do they put you under? Yes. Are you yes. are you under anesthesia? Yeah, no, they suck it out while you're looking at it. <laughs> they can numb you. I mean, no, it's a it's an anesthetic surgery. So no, it is. Think, yeah. Oh shit! It's uh, Aaron. Have you ever not had a meniscus done? I've had six of them. My yeah, I, I assumed like that is way more minor than getting fat sucked out of you. Ain't no fucking way. People are getting like mad the at meniscus us, surgery is just little snip snip. Like this little is, snip, this is, snip, bro. The recovery time, depending on which one you have, is fucking ma oh, vastly and, different. One is like you, I've had both. One is like a week and a half, maybe two weeks, and the other one is like almost two months. Yes, I mean the interior meniscus. I was lucky; I only ripped out the ex, the one that's like outside, not focus, inside. Focus, focus, focus. What anterior? We're talking about the juxtaposition between a meniscus surgery versus a liposuction. What's the recovery time for liposuction? I think there's no recovery time. I no, like, you can't go out and play sports after getting liposuction. Okay, well, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm, I genuinely don't know. Is liposuction... I, I don't think this is a major surgery, dog. Um, you can return to normal activities after two weeks. Two also, weeks? Also, if we don't want to go under the knife, we could do cool sculpting. That I don't know if that yes. works. Does that work? I don't Everyone, know. We honestly, we just need to sit in a sauna for thirty minutes every day, and we'll definitely lose weight. I don't think that's going to work. That's water weight, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess yeah, it no, can be that's both. Good. It can be both. It be minor or major, depending on how much fat is removed. Four weeks before resuming strenuous exercise, liposuction, contact sports. I think I think I'm losing a ton of water weight right now. 
because I started taking a new prescription and I've mm-hmm. been sweating way more recently. I had a buddy who once ran uh, this methylamine that was what they gave the Russian soldiers in World War Two to stay warm, but it just makes you burn a shit ton of calories. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, isn't that just, just meth? sweating all the time? Wait, let me let me look up what it is. Yeah, but I'm taking it like a pill that's like a diuretic. And so now I think. Be careful with the, uh, with the stuff that makes your heart rate increase. Yeah. Actually, does a diuretic make my heart rate? Increase? I had someone faint and have to go to the hospital after drinking a Celsius. Don't say that. I'm not. Ta- I'm not drinking Celsius. Celsius, Celsius is dangerous. Celsius is dangerous, but I don't drink it on a normal basis. I can't believe they're pawning that off as like because it, it's a, a fat burner, but they pawn yeah. it off. It's like a pre workout. Just bad. If I drink it, I drink it like during a workout sometimes. What? The f- that's how you like. That's how you have a seizure. I don't. You drink. These, you drink Celsius while you work out. It's, Sometimes these facts have not been checked by Billy Football. Yeah, you that guys, Celsius will give you a seizure if you drink it while you work I, out. I have I've enough. I've seen enough stuff on TikTok. And okay, see, stuff in here, real we life. Yeah. here we go. Billy, I don't care Billy, what the that, study that, says. That's, that's big pharma. That's a red. I see things with my own eyes. That's and ears, a red flag, and I believe Billy. It. Whenever you start to justify saying something by saying uh, I've seen enough stuff on TikTok as your research. Yeah, but honestly, that's when you need to just stop whatever when, sentence that is. When it, People are like, I used to drink two Celsius a day for two years, and then I had a seizure. Like, I think when he it, says has that been studied in a, a clinical environment, I think when he, he says he's study. seen enough on TikTok. Like, six TikToks equals one academic peer research study. Yeah, what's the yes. conversion? So if so, if you see enough TikToks, it's just, the same. Just, I mean, it's, Billy, you know what happens is like somebody will say that on TikTok, it'll go viral, and then somebody will be like, oh shit, that's a good way to get views. I'm gonna say that too. And then it becomes a trend, and then more people just say it because they're seeing other people get views by saying it. That's how it works. No. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> no. literally why you came to me yesterday no. and you said, hey, can you say into the camera, I want to kill my mom, I want to kill my dad, <laughs> I want to kill my grandma? And I was like, wait, why? And you said this is a TikTok trend. It, it is. I can confirm that. It's a TikTok trend, and so if you just say this, it'll get a bunch of views. You are did it like, not? You you are a walking, breathing algorithm right now, and you no, I saw to the see. Celsius. You're like a computer that that has it's been self optimized so many times it doesn't, but it, it still lacks the thank you for, awareness. Thank you for a roundabout way of saying I'm good at my job. That's exactly what I was saying. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's like many people have commented on Celsius being because it has on TikTok. It's not yeah. just a not only on TikTok. I did some. I was going to write a blog on it, but then. Uh, I was bad at my job and got lazy. Uh, <laughs> that was that was Gross. refreshingly honest. No, I just got swamped. It's football season. No, Why see now I, you're now you're lying Celsius. about being honest. Uh, so there's actually like tons of people who like like someone I know drank Celsius, and then you have to like wear exercise, and then yeah. like I'm not saying out. I'm not I'm not recommending this, and I'm not saying it's a good thing, but I have done it a couple times. If I do back to back spin classes, to keep me energized. I think hmm. I think it's just time that I shock my body and I do something different with my body because I've I've had the same fitness routine for a while. Maybe I get back on the Peloton. I'm spinning. Do you want to spin together? I is it on the Peloton? I don't go to. I go to a class. The nice thing about the Peloton is it's in my living room. Yeah, that's so nice. I can just do it whenever. I have a squat rack in my kitchen. Cool. That's way cooler. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna get back on this Peloton. I think. Do you maybe, guys want? Maybe Buns of Anarchy might ride again soon. We'll see. So DNP. Um is the compound we could do i'll do i uh, billy i'm willing to invest in chemicals with you for christmas apps dinitrophenol the dangerous diet pill pharmacists should know about this is definitely more dangerous than celsius okay. yeah so maybe let's not, just not do that. any chemicals let's just do good yeah. old-fashioned rocky the, wait lift waiting logs running in the <laughs> snow against the russians mm-hmm. do it let's train to beat the russians Christmas abs. That's <laughs> Christmas our new abs. Christmas abs. Trading to beat there's the no, Russians. There's no Christmas in Russia. Santa doesn't visit commies. <laughs> in in no, retrospect, that's in retrospect, wasn't it the easiest bet of all time to bet on Russia to make it out of the group stage when the World Cup was being held in Russia? Well, yeah. I mean, it was it was a no brainer, and I'm pretty sure it hit. I, I, I'm saying, I'm thinking to myself that. Wait, there might be a possibility it didn't hit. I'm I'm exposing myself as a casual, but I'm pretty sure 
Russia went pretty far in that World Cup. I don't right? remember anything about that World Cup because we the only nation that matters wasn't in it. Italy. They were in it. In 2018? Are you talking about the United States of America? I am talking about America. Did Italy miss that one too? I don't think Italy was in 2018. I guess I'm thinking they were in the Euros and won it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Is Italy Have washed? they missed back to back? Oh, that's right. Russia made it. It looks like Russia made it to the uh, quarterfinals. That's right. They lost to Croatia. So they made it pretty far. Huh, they weren't doping. Uh, Italy, well, <laughs> I was saying like Russia was definitely going to make it out of group stage in Russia because I think Putin would have the referees killed. Yeah. And they, they rigged the entire thing to make it in Russia to begin with. Um, but yeah, Italy is, a lot of people don't realize this, but I actually know that Italy isn't in the World Cup. It's kind of like my thing that I have going. And every time I predict Italy will win the World Cup in 2022, I get like a whole new group of people mad at me for saying it. So I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that big team. Literally 0% chance they lose the World Cup. Yep. No chance. Zero. That they don't win. I think they're they're not going to lose a match. Does, is it it's an likely. auto bid? Yeah. Is it an auto bid for the host country? It is. Yes. So Qatar is competing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Are they? Are they no. beat? They're great. Let's see. Qatar <laughs> FIFA ranking. No, they're really bad. Qatar FIFA ranking. Um, oh, they're forty-eight. That's not bad. Who's playing for them? Nobody. Guitar, nobody that you know. Isn't Qatar one of those places that's like most of the population is guest workers? You can call them guests. That's, yeah, that's an interesting way, to, way who, to phrase it. Who's been giving you your information, Billy? What? Guest workers. Uh, I think that's like a term they use. Is it? I'm like sure it is. is. Uh, you could you could also say slaves. Because the alternative term is bad. I just know that get there's a German word called Gestenbeiten. Mm-hmm. And that tends to people who travel there to work, but then go back to their Gesten. Oh, yeah, no, they're definitely slaves. Yeah. All right. Never mind. Yep. Hundreds of them died building these stadiums. If not more. Yeah, probably. It, it, it could very well be more. I've heard reports that have it like well into the thousands. I'm sure. So um, that was talking. I was talking Qatar. Building stadiums that will never be used again for a World Cup that we have to play in November because it's still 90 degrees there. Yep. Seems like somebody's making some money off this. How's the um, how's the live tour doing? It's a good question. I've, I haven't heard from them in a minute. Yeah, so they kind of they kind of fell off a little bit because uh, they needed the PGA Tour to be going on to drum up most of their headlines because every week on the PGA Tour they'd ask the players, "Are you planning on joining? What do you think of the live tour?" And that's how it got in the news more frequently. But now since it's, it's the off season for golf. They're not making any headlines because nobody's asking the PGA Tour players for comments on the Live Tour. So it's almost like they need the PGA Tour to be their marketing machine. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, if, this, if this league just dissipates and they just ended up paying all that the money, that would be so, what a come up. You just basically took a season off the PGA and got 100 M's. That's so fire. Yeah. I know literally nothing about this. I just searched Live Tour on Twitter. There's some ongoing thing today, it looks like, with the OWGR. I don't know what that is, but uh, they're, I, I guess the live tour is close to like being able to count towards world ranking points. It looks like. Okay. So I guess that's good for them. They're making who some determines headline. Who determines that? It looks like this OWGR, which I'm assuming is some sort of world governing body for golf. Official world golf ranking. Yeah. So I guess if they get them to sign off on it, then like wins on the live tour will count towards your ranking in the world, just like the PGA will. I'm trying to figure out what type of skill I might have that, a you know, like a, a hostile government that has tons of money would hand me a bag for. Ruining you podcasts. Could, uh, <laughs> you could volunteer to uh, be a guinea pig for something. Like, yeah. We, yeah, Billy, let's, that's a good question. I'm joking. I'm joking. I love Billy. Uh, do you want to go work for, for a foreign government? No, I mean, just like those guys getting a bag for golf is uh, pretty sick. Yeah, I mean, golf's, I, golf's hard. I, I, would, uh, I would play on the live tour if they offered me $100 million. Was Qatar paying like engineers? 
Like, I think Qatar was paying engineers like huge money to come build stadiums. They were because it's like physically impossible for yeah. the, for them to create these stadiums without. It would have been impossible for them to do it without slave labor. That's yeah. not even a question. And so somebody's making money off of this. Also, how did they they built these stadiums specifically for this? How do they not have roofs? <laughs> That's, a, that's another I, great question. I saw a TikTok showing the stadiums. They're all open air stadiums. Where are the roofs? <laughs> we could. Now that I'm thinking about it, this is the dumbest shit. We could have had the World Cup in the summer if they just put roofs on them. <laughs> <laughs> the, am I am I crazy? The head of Qatar is like the roof is open. <laughs> no, you're right. If they'd made Shivers domes, say. am I am I crazy? Yeah, they, they. That's a good point. I guess the thinking is you don't want to play soccer on turf. But there are domes that have yeah, you can natural roll grass out. stadiums two. or natural grass fields. I can think of two in the NFL right now. The, the Las Vegas, Raiders. Yeah, and Arizona. Cardinals, yeah. It's a great point, Big T. How, yeah, nobody nobody considered Arizona. a roof. Arizona's my second favorite field. Yeah, is it like super soft? I loved it. Oh, it was such good grass. What was number one? Uh, Denver. Why is that? The grass was so good. It just the grass, just the turf at the time was so good. I don't know what it is now. It is, and and also that was the most, that was the biggest, um, or the closest feel to like an SEC stadium. Like when it's rocking, mm-hmm. that's that was like I was like, oh shit, this shit feels like college. Did you ever have any problems with the field at? at ut because opposing fans for a long time have complained that like that field sucks and players get injured no which mostly just comes from marcus Lattimore tore up his knee there and then nick chubb had his leg like turned backwards i think those were just like fluke things and i think yeah the field was always good to me i mean grass is a little thick but it wasn't anything crazy to what to my knowledge good now to know. Houston's field was fucking awful when I first got there. They like wheeled in like two by two squares of of grass. It was just the worst. And so there was like divots and holes. It was it was the absolute worst. And I couldn't believe it was an NFL stadium. Oh, somebody who was it? One of them uh, white receivers from New England tore up his knee and sued. Houston and one. Oh, Wes Welker. I think it was. Yeah, there you go. Did yeah, he really? Yeah. Or was mm-hmm. it Julian Edelman? I Someone got tackled. From one behind. of them. No, no, no. I remember. No, no, no. He, he didn't even get tackled. I think he just planned it because literally, like, I think it was, was Wes Welker. Like wheel yeah. in squares. It might have been him, but they would like wheel in squares and like there was like holes and and there was there was it was just the worst. It was the absolute worst. I've actually I, I googled this. A uh, uh, several players have sued yeah. the Texans. Uh, mm-hmm. former Texans punter, uh, Matt Turk. Yeah. Matt Turk. Yeah. Yeah. This guy sued the Texans for an injury. Yeah, he just, yep. He just planted in this shit. Yep. It was, it was a bad field. Oh, it's, Brett it's, it's Hartman. I don't know what it is. Uh, I think he played with you. <laughs> His suit for injury cool. sustained during a December 2011 That's game. That's right. I think he was like a special teams player. He's a punter. Yeah. Uh, and then this also says D'Amico Ryan's sued the Damn, NFL did he, Miko? I didn't and the Texans over a 2014 injury at NRG Stadium. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Because he. Uh, yep. He tore his ACL. Shit. Seeking more than 10 million in damages. City. Because an Achilles tendon injury up. he suffered uh, due to the playing surface at NRG Stadium. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it, it seems bad. like uh, it. these players have a case if they're all suing. MetLife also no, has a terrible good. turf. Um, that's, that's average. What about what about FedEx Field, Landover? Which one is that? The Commanders. Oh. I remember it being a little thick, but it was fine. I didn't ever. You probably played there early on in the season because as the season goes on, it gets worse. At the end of of years, they yeah, used to just two. like they used to spray paint like green onto the sand oh, to make it yeah, look no, like it was, grass. It was, yeah, it was game two. It was game two, and it wasn't. It was a bad. The one that was shit, like at the latter part of the year, was Chicago. That shit was yeah. horrible. It was just really bad, really bad field. And then I think that the. the other one is obvious. This is before. Um, this is when they was Oakland, but Oakland shit where it was splintered with the uh, 
the baseball. Like, bro, come yeah. on, bro. We were really playing all dirt. Like, the fuck? This shit was the worst, though. Yeah, that's. it's funny that it used to be like Oakland, Miami. They would double as baseball fields. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy thing. Plum dumb. As much Plum money dumb. as the NFL brings in as recently as, like, what, five years ago? They used to play on baseball fields sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, Big T, what you got? What you got? Congratulations on the Atlanta Braves winning the NL East. Fifth straight year. Fifth straight. That's crazy. Yep. I didn't realize that. MLB record, 22nd division title. Well, yeah. I mean, I think he had, what, 12 in a row? 14. 14 in a row back NL in the NL West and East. That's right. That's weird. Yeah. When my uncles were kids, like all the games were at 10 p.m. because all the road games because they were in the NL West. That's bizarre. Yeah. What's weirder, the Braves being in the NL West or the Cardinals being in the NL East? I mean, the Cardinals are way closer to the East than the Braves are to the West. No, I mean the sorry, the Arizona Cardinals oh. being in the NFC East. When they, was that? They were for a long time. Long time. I mean, I yeah, both know, of those are that. about But yeah, the Braves, like all their road games were Dodgers, Giants, Rockies. So um so congratulations. Yeah. Give me your give me your official big T playoff preview, then we'll get into DC sniper stuff. I mean, if we get if we get Spencer Strider back before the NLDS, I think we're I think we're going back to back. We just, we we got that swagger back. Back to back. We just might be those motherfuckers again. Back to back. So who's your biggest competition? I mean, Dodgers, same as every year. Yeah, the Dodgers. I, I just don't want it to be the Dodgers again. I, I'm i also s- slightly concerned about Cardinals devil magic in October again, especially now that they're on a Pujols, Wainwright, Molina farewell tour. Um, so I'm I'm kind of rooting for the Phillies here in this this weekend, but um, the Braves actually have a much better path as the two seed than the Dodgers do. They have to play presumably the Mets in the in the division series. So we'll see. I'm uh, I'm excited. It was, it was fun to win. Winning this division feels almost as good, if not as good, as winning the World Series. Wow! Because and- you're only saying that though because you won the World Series last year. What do you mean? You would never say that it felt almost as good as winning a World Series if you hadn't just won your World Series. Y- yeah, point. probably. Point. Point. But point. Uh, but like the World Series was like a magical one month run that I wouldn't trade for anything. Yeah. But I've been preying on the Mets' downfall for six months, mm-hmm. and to see it happen was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Was it? Did you get more pleasure out of watching that or out of watching the Braves surge? What do you mean? I mean, the, the Mets never played that poorly. We just played out of our minds. Like they, I think they have the fourth best record in baseball since June first, mm-hmm. and we have the best. We're like seventy-seven and thirty-eight or something. They so the Braves just like. I mean, obviously those last three games, I guess you would call that a, a collapse because they only needed to win one of them. Yeah, and they didn't. But yeah, I mean, we're we're a g- great ball club. Great ball club. I just I, I like seeing to. Big T happy. Big uh, W. CBT <laughs> dub. All right, so you guys want to get into some sniper stuff or Aaron, is there anything else you want to get into? I'm pretty positive that by the end of the weekend I will be reaching Diamond in Valorant. Wow. Just saying. Can I Yeah. Were you playing valorant or sleeping that you were late to the show uh i was actually taking a boo-boo man it was um it was 30 minutes very how long do you take five to ten what i mean i can't you know and ten is if i'm like really on my phone just dicking around I can't dictate how much shit comes out, man. I don't know what you want me to say. I, I, I sit on the toilet until I'm done, man. I'm not going to be trying to fuck you over time-wise, Big T. I'm no, I mean, I know. I've just, that's, that I've just never heard of 30. <laughs> what? That shit is normal for me. A 30-minute boo-boo, is, that's, a, that's a big one. I'm that's not saying, a long time. I'm not saying I've never done it before, and Billy likes to call me a poop guy. Billy, where's a, where does a 30-minute shit rank on your poop guy moves? I mean, the thing is, you're allowed to take a 30-minute shit just like when you have the time. 
yeah. not just obnoxiously like right before recording like when you get home from work i've never like, taken a 30 minute shit that's delayed us that no long but like if it. you're just if it's like if you wake up in the morning you're drinking your pre-workout and you got time take a 30 minute shit do whatever you want like i got i got in today i got in today nine o'clock i first thing i was drinking coffee and then i just i just you know i had time did my business didn't didn't like didn't uh hurt anybody else's time and yeah billy sounds pressed about this he does yeah you got a little pressed. are you gonna get off your chest family no i mean just pft is a poop guy he what is, he poops at inopportune times i don't know if i'm a poop guy i pooped i pooped one time in a five guys because i had to shit there's, there's been several other when times. we were on the road Look, it's okay. Whatever. You it's okay. can't. You can't dictate that kind of stuff. When you gotta go, you gotta That's go. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's like, like I don't understand. Like I know people, especially like women in general. Like they'll go, <laughs> they'll go to the bathroom. It'll be like three minutes, and I'm like, yo, what? Yeah, are you yeah. Doing? I don't understand that shit. Like, li- like I literally sit down, and I got stuff coming out of me for thirty minutes. Like it's not constant, but like it'll stop, and then you know minute or two later something else will come i just keep coming i don't know what uh, what can i do to change that there's i have stuff in me and it wants to come out and i sit there till it's done i don't it's 10 times, i don't make the rules it's 10 times worse for you to hold it in your poop rather than just like let it be just let agree it, let is, it, is that really bad for you yeah it's really bad for you why because it's toxins in your body that you need to rid. you guys have bad bowel discipline that's what i'm chalking it up to mm-hmm. my i mean look Billy looks at his at, at his butthole like an <laughs> offensive line on a hard count. It's like you so, got to you got to be able to to just to focus. It's like You're, my butthole doesn't focus hard enough. You got to know when to fold him, know when to hold him, know when to walk away, know when to run. Um, no, but it's really bad for your body cuz it holds their toxins in longer than it needs to be. There's a reason when you poop, you got to poop. Well, Not that I would know, girls don't poop, but I used to get a lot of uh, when I was taking creatine monohydrate. I used to get a lot of bad shit. So I understand what you're saying, but oh my God, creatine yeah. HCL, on the other hand, doesn't give you those digestive problems. Huh? Where can they get that? Oh, uh, oh, so there's this. Oh, actually, the creatine I'm taking, Concrete. Concrete is an amazing brand of creatine. That Very smooth. I mean, it's creatine HCL. Doesn't give you the digestive problems. Doesn't make you bulk. Doesn't give you the water weight that creatine monohydrate does. It's actually one of the best supplements I currently take. You definitely can tell when you take creatine mono, uh, creatine HCL because your pumps are better. Your I, you just feel better in the gym. You feel like you can lift more, a little more stamina. It's the only microdosing creatine concrete it's absolutely required for functional energy in every cell of your body your muscles need creatine to perform optimally and grow stronger your brain uses about 20 percent of the creatine in your body just to think concrete fuels your body and your mind take control of your health both body and mind build a better you with concrete register now at concrete.com dash podcast that's c-o-n dash C-R-E-T.com forward slash podcast. Receive free membership to Planet Fitness for an entire year, plus a $500 Walmart Visa gift card. Available now online and in-store at Walmart. Concrete is truly life-changing and performance-enhancing. Very good, Billy. That was that was wonderful. I want to say congratulations. That should win Ad Read of the Week. Thank you. I try. If anybody out there, I know somebody at Barstool listens to these ad reads because we won Ad Read of the Week last week yeah. for a Shady Ray's ad read. Uh, so they just announced the world's best 50 bars, the world's best 50 bars as huh. ranked by Condé Nast Traveler. I'm going to, I'm going to look at the list real quick. There are, I mean, there's a lot from the United States. We're fucking killing it. Good shit. All right. Whoever wrote, whoever wrote this list obviously lives in the West village, New York. Obviously. Wait, can you send me the list? Is it the world's so, 50 best let me, bars.com? So there's a West Village bar on there? There are three. Three? Somehow what? three of the world's... Okay, the world. So, so let me guess. In the entire world. Down the Hatch Village Tavern. <laughs> it's Down the Hatch is on there. <laughs> Thebes B-Bar. My guesses are Red Lion. No. <laughs> Red Light. All these people who... Wogies? Down the Hatch. Village Tavern. All the Village dogs. Tavern. Have you guys ever read like a Condé Nast list before? You guys are naming like sports bars and shit. I don't know. I'm. I don't go to Condé Nast bars, but I'm. 
I'm trying to think what honestly West there's Village. no bars from Hoboken which has the most bars per capita in the United States then this list is rigged this is quality over quantity oh do y'all remember and I don't even know no this wasn't even in the vlog Avery, but do y'all remember the quality of drinks at the Tennessean yes mm -hmm. yeah they were good those were some of the best drinks I've ever had on like they smoked the 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 old fashions and they yeah. had this is how you know you have a really good bar and really good like what are they call baristas bartenders like, but there's difference there's there's like there's like uh, bartenders and there's people mixed. there's people who shave the insides of a lime or an orange off into your drink to give it that yep. little extra je ne sais quoi with Mi it right mixologist. but it's like this is how you can tell if they had mixologists there you go they have Circular ice cubes like that. If they have that, it's a very high quality drink. Mm -hmm. Spherical. Those spherical ice cubes with the whiskey with whiskey are killer. Yep. I like those. I like those too. I, have you ever seen like the thing that you put in your freezer to make those? It's like a, it looks like a, a it's like a rubber ball. And then you fit what it looks like. What Billy looks like a bra. Then you like fold it over. Yeah. It does kind of look like a bra. You got nervous about the word bra. <laughs> I love that. It was such a cool spot, too, because it had like a nice couch. There were TVs in there. Overall, just a sick bar. So, yeah, it's a really good bar. So, what, what are you guys' favorite bars in the world? Down the hatch. That's number one. I, love I guess I'm more of an Atlanta guy than you are, Big T, because I'm going to say the Northside Tavern <laughs> in Atlanta, Georgia. Got it. I've never been there. Fantastic spot. I'm going to keep my favorite bars to myself because I don't want people to know I go there because then I'll get bothered. Two. One is the West Village one, Peculiar Pub, best bar in the West Village. A-list Billy said, I'll get yeah. bothered if mm -hmm. I if I give out my favorite bars. Mm -hmm. And Brick Street Bar. You hear that? In hear that, Macrodosians? Billy, <laughs> you bother Billy. Stop bothering Billy. Hashtag, uh, don't what, bother Billy. What are the bars that are on there in the West Village? The bars that are on there in the West Village are employees only. Never heard of it. It's on Hudson Street. Been there. I've been there oh, as well. Is Hudson Hound going to be on there? Hudson Hound is not on here. Oh, I do like this. Uh, employees only is on the list. Dante, also in the West Village. Is that a bar? That I don't think a that's a bar. It's a, it's a bar slash restaurant. It's it's very good. I've I, never been. I go there. I've been there a few times. That's like a nice restaurant. Yeah, I yeah, you're right. I don't. I wouldn't consider that. That's like a, a bar necessarily. And then the third one is Katana Kitten. Never heard of that either. It's a pretty good place, but again, it's a restaurant. Yeah. It's not a bar. It's very interesting. You said in the world. Yeah. Um, if anyone's ever been to Moon Bar Rooftop in St. Martin, the place is unbelievable. It's like right on the water. It's insane. But in New York, Mustang Harry's. Shout out the Rangers. It's right mm -hmm. down the street. It's, it's, it's right a great across bar. the street from us. Yeah. Actually, Billy's next to Yankee Stadium. Is yeah, awesome. that's, yeah. That's yeah. Billy's awesome. is so fun. Yeah. If Billy's you've never been awesome. to Billy's, you have to go to I Billy's. I may have been named after Billy's. Really? Yeah. Actually, I, like is that like a, a place of conception type thing? Yeah, uh, maybe. When you asked me, <laughs> when you asked me my favorite bar, I was thinking in New York, but my favorite bar in the world is the PBR at the Battery at Truist Park. That place rocks. <laughs> What's After, that? It's, it's the professional bull riding bar. Oh yeah, and they have a mechanical bull in there, and they just play country music, bangers, and it's packed as fuck after a Braves game like it's it's wow. rocks there's one there's one in uh the one I've seen was in uh not Dallas but um they're all in those like stadium complexes yeah, yeah. type deals I saw one in St. Louis why am I forgetting where's the Dallas stadium in technically Arlington, Arlington yeah mm -hmm. um saw one there it was closed okay so let's let's make a list the best bars in the world according to macro dosing mm -hmm. which which East Village bar did you say Big T East Village? Yeah. I don't know. No. I said down the hatch. Is that? Oh, I guess that's, that's West Village. Village. Yeah. Yeah. Down the hatch, North Side Tavern. <laughs> you guys are actually putting down the hatch. Billy puts. Bro, I love down, I the love hatch. down the hatch. Billy puts Billy's Bar. I, I agree with Billy. Aaron, what's your favorite bar that you've ever been to in your life? Oh, muted. There was this one, there was this one <laughs> in New York that, uh, uh, damn, Big T. It was it wasn't a slide. I was There's just little... I was just letting you know. I, I didn't <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Sounded, it sounded little... worse than I intended. I was just Okay, okay. Well, I, I appreciate you admitting that. But um there was this one in New York that I don't know where it was, but they served me some of the best drinks I ever had. It was like like really spicy 
martini. I don't, I have no idea where where I was because you know New York <laughs> nights <laughs> it get a little get a little wild. Okay, we'll put on the and list. I don't, I don't, we'll put on the list. Arian says that bar in New York that served the good spicy martini. Mar drinks. Martinis or margaritas. Yeah. Martini, bro. I'm, I'm there's a lot of judgment on this podcast. No, no but I just never. Right? No, everybody, okay. everybody want to get anything off their chest, shoot a 30, whatever. What's happening? <laughs> you know, another bar I love that I feel like people in here and people who live in New York will judge me for what? Uh, 235th, which is a rooftop oh, yeah. that's like specifically yeah. catered to tourists and everything is way overpriced, but they have a frozen strawberry margarita there <laughs> that is so unbelievable. It's like seventeen dollars, and I don't care. Like, it's it's unreal. It's that sounds very limousine liberal of you. It is, and <laughs> but I don't go there unless like I have friends in town or something. But every time I have a reason to go, I go and I get actually four of those. My my favorite bar, and if you see me there, you can absolutely bother me. McSorley's. Oh yeah. McSorley's one of the spot, oldest yeah. bars in New the York City in the world. Survived two pandemics. Mm -hmm. Two pandemics, several, actually probably more than that. They probably, they survived like, yeah, typhoid fever. Abraham Lincoln went there to try to rally Irish immigrants to serve in the Union Army and did speeches there, campaign speeches. It was, it's one of the greatest bars. They serve two things, light ale and dark ale. Yep. And you can just drink so many of them. Don't they have peanuts there you can still like sell Yeah, and they actually store? have really good food. Like well, if you get the chicken sandwich or the burger. Their uh their glasses are I want to say maybe eight ounces or ten ounces, so you can drink a million, a million glasses of beer. It's fantastic. Actually we should go there and I, I might do a vlog there. Make some content. Yeah, great, just, great job, Billy. Now we're yeah. thinking. Now we're really yeah. working hard. Yeah. We're just, I might like, get with gas. I might go get hammered at a bar and take a video. <laughs> You're the, but you're it's the, the experience. McSorley's is experience. You're like, the king I take of the all north. my friends. You're, you're, you're Mincy part two. He's rubbing <laughs> off on you. <laughs> He's taught me well. Although, no, Mincy would never, he doesn't drink, but he would You'd He eat. would make a vlog yeah. of a bar. No, but if you him. had like a McSorley, you could make a really good McSorley night video where it's just like all the glasses, picking up all the glasses, like putting all the glasses down. Yep. And then picking yeah. them up. And then putting them down. <laughs> and then smashing them and singing songs. <laughs> And then reading stuff on the wall because there's a lot of really cool old articles. I think it was opened in 180 McSorty's Old Ale House on 7th. It was opened in 1891. 1827. Oh shit, that's that's very old. Just kidding. That's when John McSorley was born. Okay. A lot of you guys sleep on bars like McSorley, not me. I sleep on a Helix Sleep mattress at night. Oh. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailor mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. Everybody is unique. Everyone sleeps a little bit differently. For instance, I can no longer sleep on the left side of my body for the last couple of nights because Billy threw a football into it and, and Nike and broke my ribs. And Nike, the what what kind of football is that? It's a vapor strike or something. A vapor strike ruined my cartilage. Uh, fortunately, I sleep on a Helix mattress. It's very comfortable. And Helix has several different mattresses models to choose from. Each is designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. They have models with memory foam layers that provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. They have models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in stomach and back sleeping positions, plus enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. And if your spine needs some extra TLC, they got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layers on top. It's a perfect combination of comfort and support. I took the Helix sleep quiz and I was matched with a Helix Twilight mattress because I sleep on my side. I wanted something that felt firm and cooling. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattresses and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash dose. That's helixsleep.com slash dose. With Helix, better sleep starts now. So I'm, I'm reading on the McSorley's website. It was started in 1854, but they didn't allow women till 1975. Huh? <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> they didn't install a woman's restroom until 1986. That's wild. That's that's pretty far. Jeez. That's my that was my birth year. That's when things started to change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, not really. Uh, there's a golf course out here. Um, it's called Lochinvar. Uh, I don't think they allowed women on it. To my knowledge, they didn't when I played on there. 
um but i don't i don't know if they changed since then but they didn't allow women on it it's a really nice golf course too i think it's like it, one of them private jumps augusta was like that until very recently too they mm -hmm. didn't allow female members until i think condoleezza rice was the first it was one. like 10 years ago 10 years ago yeah that's fucking wild though <laughs> it's a place where guys can be dudes that shit is crazy so he man he man woman hater clip yep <laughs> You guys want to talk a, a little DC sniper? Yeah. It is 20 years, just about to the day, since the DC area was uh, was put into a month of terror. So I'm just going to come out and say it. I think this was an MK Ultra guy. Okay. I think uh, I think he definitely was swayed a certain way because this just doesn't happen. Let's talk about it. Let's I think this was part of a whole. We can have the discussion, Billy, because uh, John Muhammad, mm -hmm. the guy that ended up being the, I guess, the the ringleader. I don't know if you want to call him the ringleader, but um, it was him and uh, Lee Boyd Malvo, mm -hmm. who was a, a child that was under Muhammad's mm -hmm. control at the time, basically uh, brainwashed him and took him on this trip. They ended up killing a bunch of people, and uh, Muhammad was in the military for a while beforehand. Yeah. And he was pissed off at the government, right? Mm -hmm. So he was in Desert Storm. Uh, he claimed that he had he uh, got some sort of poisoning from yeah. some of the burn pits, things like that. Which, I mean, that could be true. It uh, could definitely be true. But you think? Why do you think that he was in uh, like some sort of government control program? Just from his, you know, background, military. You, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm. I'm sort of totally going out on a limb and saying this probably because I can't understand the scope of why someone would do this, that he may have been like, you know, given LSD and hypnotized in some way or radicalized mm -hmm. by the U S government for whatever, for some type of their means. But I'm just ascertaining that because I can't understand why someone would commit these random acts of violence in, you know, like, like this guy seems to me like a Manson type in a way. In the way he kills his whole ideology, he seems like he, you know, could have been one of these guys who were part of MK Ultra. Okay, so we can we can get into that a little bit later. Um, just a little bit of background on John. His, he was born John Williams, on on New Year's Eve, nineteen sixty. He was born in Louisiana. When he was seventeen, he enlisted at uh, in the Louisiana Army National Guard, and then he volunteered for active duty in 1985 in 87 he joined the nation of islam so he changed his surname to muhammad but that was much later he, he changed his surname in 2001 uh, so he was in the army he was a truck driver he was a metal worker he was an expert rifleman which is the highest award that they give for marksmanship mm -hmm. uh, in the basic to a basic soldier in the united states army not a specialist he got married twice, and um, his second wife, Mildred, divorced him. And that's when things really started to fall apart for Muhammad. So he flipped out. Um, he moved. Uh, he took his, his children. He basically kidnapped his children after the divorce from Mildred. And he took them to Antigua in 1999. So he, he got... He was very upset. The The relationship did not end well. And when he was down in Antigua, he met Una James. Una James uh, was a woman in Antigua, and she had a son named Lee Boyd Malvo. And uh, Lee and Muhammad became very close friends. And then Muhammad kidnapped Malvo and took him to Florida. That's kind of his MO, is yeah. like kidnapping people that he thinks he controls. And so uh, he became like very close. He was almost like a father figure to Lee Boyd Malvo in Antigua. And then he just took him to the United States. Malvo probably didn't have a, a problem with it. Um, mm -hmm. Muhammad would say that that was his stepson. And that's mm -hmm. what he would tell people, even though they weren't really stepson. He wasn't stepfather, stepson. Uh, so he moved him to Fort Myers, Florida. And uh, then they moved to Bellingham, Washington. And then he tried to get them in schools and in school it raised a bunch of red flags because they're like, wait, this guy is trying to enroll um, three children who were reported as missing 
his own children from his marriage. And then this other kid that is not actually his son or stepson legally. There's no paperwork for these guys. So um, the authorities were notified. They came, they got the uh, the three children, then they sent them back to John Muhammad's uh, wife, Mildred. So they got back together. Um, and then Malvo got reunited with his mom in Miami. Then they got arrested by Border Patrol. And... But Malvo ended up staying in the United States and eventually made his way back to Muhammad. So uh, they would travel around the country. I think they lived in a homeless. Yes, they lived in a homeless shelter together in Bellingham. And then Mal Malvo enrolled himself in high school. And then uh, Muhammad was taking him all around the United States and just brainwashing, teaching him that that women were evil, that they're trying to take away everything from uh, from their men. And he got him riled up to a point where uh, they tried to kill one of Mildred's friends, but they killed her niece instead. And uh, then they got, uh, then they started really going around the nation, committing robberies, committing mm -hmm. murders. And people don't really talk about the murders that were caught up or that, that were part of their crime spree that started before they made it to Washington, yeah. D.C. But they killed people in uh, Alabama, obviously Maryland. And I think they shot somebody Washington. else in Louisiana. The niece story is crazy, too, because he never told him that he was going to kill his niece. He just sent him there. He was like, you have to kill this person. He never mentioned that it was like family related. Yeah. And he just shot her right in the face. When did it stop becoming very easy to commit crimes? Because I would have guessed it was before 2002. And it mm -hmm. seems like it wasn't. Well, it's. You can get away, I think, with committing random. Random. Crime. Well, it actually, has... that's what that's what makes it so scary. Is and I think we've had this conversation on the on the show before, but uh, I think it's pretty much impossible to get away with murder if you if you have somebody in your life, a friend, yeah. an acquaintance, uh, somebody that you're enemies with, whatever. If you want to kill that person, I think it's impossible to get away with murder right now. If I, I think they up... can track you. There's so much stuff on your phone. There's cameras on every road. They can look everything up. Yeah, but if it's a completely random, if you have crime, zero criminal history, completely random. You I, have yeah. a five percent. So chance. there's, current, I think it's, I think it might be easier than that. There's I think current, you have to yeah. keep. Well, the reason why it might only be five percent is because I think if you kill like a random person, you're probably the type of person that will continue to kill right, random like people. This. So there's, and then you'll get you'll get caught eventually. Actually, I wanted to talk about this on the show. There's currently a serial killer in Stockton, California. He's killed five people, men ages thirty five to sixty five. He's on the loose. Uh, if you know anything, please report it to the police. Um, but he's just randomly killing people, shooting them and not even robbing them, just shooting them and walking away. Mm -hmm. So because there's like the only thing we know is he's killing men 35 to 65. That's all we know. That's like who has a, you know, that's because it's so random because it's there's no robbery. They have no way of pinning this guy back. Yeah. So 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 when it when it comes to like the first killing, the one that was the Alabama one, right? Where Muhammad, it, if you've seen Better Call Saul, it's kind of like when the guy, the drug dealer, breaks into Saul's apartment and then makes uh, whatever her name is. It's been so long since I've seen it actually, but sends her out to kill the chicken man at his doorstop. So um, Muhammad asked Lee Malvo to go kill this person. Lee had no idea who it was. He was just like, okay, I'll do it because John told me so. And it was somebody that was closely connected to John Muhammad. So a lot of people think that really this is a custody battle that that played out in the most fucked up, violent way. Obviously, Muhammad had some sort of like mental issue going into it. Um, but what he was really pissed off about was his ex-wife and his ex-wife taking their children. And then that turned into just this fucking reign of terror right when yeah. they did the custody battle he brought the kids back and he thought he was gonna have a, a chance to have the kids but they were basically like the court already decided this you you can't have your kids and yeah. they, they played the tapes back and he was dumbfounded he was like i don't even have a chance to defend myself yeah he thought that it was like a a, a formal court procedure where it was going to be the the two of them arguing before a judge and then the judge deciding who's more fit to have the children maybe right. there can be some sort of arrangement worked out between him and his ex-wife and the judge just said like okay yeah you get the kids all the time and then john was like wait what's i don't have my kids anymore uh and so he was he was 
bent out of shape over that and he kind of made it his mission to like get back i think at at women in general and then more specifically to just like buzz the tower of his ex-wife and he found out where his ex-wife was living and a lot of people say that's why he did the shootings in yeah. the dc area well the def I think the defense when they were trying him was trying to frame him that he was doing random killings so that if he killed his wife, they wouldn't be able to trace it back to him. And that was his motive. Um, but what they find out later is that there's much more to it. And uh, we can get into that in a second, but it, it wasn't exactly having to do with him trying to kill his wife. Um, but quick question, PFT. Mm -hmm. Is that a paper you wrote? No, it's not a paper. The, the I've, one on the bottom. I've got lot. I've got lots of documents right here. Is it that's is a an that's undergrad an undergraduate paper. This is a, this is, is undergrad paper, by... but it's it was it was not written by me. Did you did you get someone one of your classmates' paper? No, I didn't. Okay. No, I didn't. I just I had Mad Dog print up a bunch of hard. I like using hard copies to read off of during yeah. this show. And so when I was just doing research on this, I listened to a few podcasts. The Monster Podcast is really good if you guys want to take like a deeper dive on it. The Monster Podcast on the DC Snipers, it's fantastic. Uh, and then I did some research online. I came across this undergrad paper just like popped up in a search. And so I started reading it. And there's a bunch of it's written by somebody that was in the DC area when this happened. And there's a bunch of things that she brings up that reminded me of some things that I felt when this was happening. So I just I'm using this just to uh, to like look at some of her reactions um, to kind of let you guys know like what it was like in that area. Uh, so the the first killing, Bill, you're right. The first killing was February sixteenth, two thousand two, and that was Malvo who killed uh, Kenya Nicole Cook. And then September fifth, two thousand two, uh, Malvo and Muhammad they they stalked somebody in uh, in Montgomery County, Maryland, and then on the third night, Malvo approached the person shot them six times with a 22 caliber pistol and robbed him of his cash and laptop computer. But the person that got shot ended up surviving. Uh, but they re they remember uh, Malvo approaching them in the parking lot and shooting them. I think they shot the person like through their car door. But again, this was like a random person that got, that got stalked. It had no connection to the two people, to Muhammad or Malvo, which is why it made it so tough to figure out who it was. Do we know how they're traveling in between all these places? Was it in the car? Yeah, they, yeah, bought, they were driving. Right? They they bought the the Chevy Caprice. So were they going cross country from like Washington to Maryland to Montgomery? At the start of it, they went cross country. They went from yeah from Washington to uh, Louisiana, Alabama, Maryland. Because the crazy part about the whole thing is like we did a cross country road trip mm -hmm. and a lot of fun, but like. How would you be able to do a cross country road trip after like killing somebody? They seemed like they were just mentally locked in. Like John Muhammad groomed this kid Lee Malvo yeah. to be this killer. He was making him play video games of killings to desensitize him to the idea of killing people. It was crazy huh. how he he was able to do this to such a young kid, but he was so vulnerable at the time because he had a really bad past. His mother would beat him, and uh, he was quiet in school. And the only thing that really like gave him life was guns. I, I, I saw something with his like old school teacher. He didn't say a word in class, Lee Malvo. But when they showed a movie about guns and they started asking about like what the model of guns were, he raised his hand right away and started naming off like the models of guns that were in the movie. He knew them like name by name, caliber by caliber. So he was like, at this point, John Muhammad had fully yeah. brainwashed this kid into becoming a, a, a full blown killer. Yeah, I, I think with Muhammad, he was a psycho he had some rage issues he was not uh some people that were in his unit in the army accused him of like trying to kill them right so he he had some some violent tendencies and i think going and serving overseas in a war fucked him up even worse and so he came back he couldn't he he was antisocial didn't make friends um had violent relationships with his with his wives and uh nobody really wanted to be around him they he made everyone a little bit uneasy because of these rage issues. And so he would, when he saw Lee Malvo, a quiet kid, didn't talk much. He was the only father figure in that kid's life. The kid loved John Muhammad. Then Muhammad was like, okay, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna train this kid almost like we're in our own military together. 
and I'm going to bring him up and, and teach him everything that I know. And they developed this like weird fucked up symbiotic relationship where John needed Lee Malvo because he didn't have his own kids. They'd been taken away and Lee needed John because Lee didn't have his own father and there was nobody in his life that was showing any sort of interest in him. Mm -hmm. And so they became like completely dependent on each other and almost like since they were so insulated, they grew up in like their own little weird environment and created their own view of the world that was completely detached from reality. But they grew up like mission oriented towards do it. Like Lee's entire purpose was do whatever John tells me to do. And John's entire purpose was uh, violence. Right. And, and also let's get back at my ex-wife. Well, not exactly. Okay. So from record scratch, not exactly. So Malvo's whole, uh, not Malvo. Malvo was supposed to be the first of many children that John was going to sort of radicalize like this. John's end game was to establish a camp in Canada where homeless children would be trained as terrorists. And to start this camp in Canada, he was going to try to extort the U.S. government for tens of millions of dollars to put together this army of homeless children to enact terror to get back to the U.S. government and, you know, establish like Coney. Yeah, he wanted to. So he wanted to establish a, utop a utopian society for 140 homeless black children on a Canadian compound and sort of just reign terror. And he sort of uh, authorities claim that Muhammad admitted that he admired and modeled himself after Osama bin Laden and Al Qaeda and approved of the September 11th attacks. So um, it they think that he was trying to sort of start an extremist group to you know commit jihad against the United States. And uh, he, he's quoted as saying, Muhammad, I have been accused on my mission. Allah knows I'm going to suffer now. He wrote. His rants and drawings featured not only features figures such as Osama bin Laden and Saddam Hussein, but also characters from the film series The Matrix. These musings were dismissed as immaterial. Um, he would had no direct terroristic ties or political ideologies. Like he had no direct ties to Al-Qaeda, no direct ties to anyone in specific. Mm -hmm. But he sort of was trying to rain terror on the United States for all the wrongs it had done to, me, done to him. I don't think it was directly a, a religious uh like war for him, but he used terminology such as jihad and, you know, wanted to terrorize the United States. He did. Yeah. He, he just wanted to create terror. And, uh, honestly he did a pretty effective job with it. It's kind of crazy that there've been no copycats. And we can, well, we, honestly, we can get into that. In we can honestly way. thank the Patriot Act. I mean, like, let's be real. Okay. Like, thank you Patriot Act for, sort of just for your service yeah i mean like shout when out, you think about it, like we we shit on the patriot, the patriot Act. we we just did an episode on um snowden but like they know every single person who goes in and out of new york city every day mm -hmm. like they know every car that goes through the tunnels they know everybody from facial scan technology who goes on public transport in and out of the city they know everybody who goes through on the fdr drive everywhere like it would be hard to do this. They have this in almost every metropolitan area that they could figure something out like this quickly. But if we wanted to get to how Malvo described, before we talk about the actual events, Malvo described their three-part, uh, three-phase plan to sort of terrorize uh, and extort the United States. Um, so Muhammad's complete plan, which consisted of three phases in the Washington, D.C. and Baltimore metro areas. Phase one consisted of meticulously planning, mapping, and practicing their locations around the D.C. area so that after each shooting, they could quickly leave the area on a predetermined path and move to the next location. Muhammad's goal in phase one was to kill six white people a day for 30 days. Malvo went on to describe how phase one did not go as planned due to heavy traffic and lack of a clear shot and or getaway at different locations. Phase two was meant to take place in Baltimore. Malvo described how this phase was close to being implemented but was never carried out. Phase two is intended to begin by killing a pregnant woman by shooting her in the abdomen. Jesus. The next step would have been to shoot and kill a Baltimore police officer. At the officer's funeral, they were, would plant several improvised explosive devices. These explosives were intended to kill a large number of police since many police would attend another officer's funeral. More bombs were then to be detonated as ambulance arrived at the scene. 
The last phase was to take place immediately after phase two to extort several million dollars from the U.S. government. This money would be used to finance a larger plan to travel north into Canada and recruit other effectively orphaned boys to use weapons and stealth and send them out to commit shootings across the country. So it sounds like he had, I mean, he had a plan. Now it's all fantasy. Like this none, is, none of this could have ever actually come to fruition just by one guy carrying this out. I mean, this is why I think it was like an MK Ultra thing because he he was insane. He like he had delusions of grandeur. Yeah, Manson, pretty clearly. Manson had his own, and I kind of like Manson is a huge parallel for me for, to this guy and why I sort of think it was one of these MK Ultra things because Manson had this whole idea: helter skelter, cause a race war. Yeah. Uh, he had tons of people under him who were just as manipulated and would kill people just like Malvo. It's kind of fascinating how it's like almost directly correlated. I mean, so, but let's just say that, that he tried to carry this and he did, I guess, try to carry it out, but you can't, you can't follow through on these plans. Like it, it would be impossible. Okay. You could, pro you could definitely, you could definitely shoot a random pregnant person. That's, that's definitely something that he was capable of pulling off. You could definitely shoot a police officer. He could have pulled that off too. Uh, but then like setting bombs at the funerals and when the first responders show up, more bombs go off. Like that's impossible for one person to, to do that all on his own. And then mm -hmm. after that, to use that to extort the government to get millions of dollars to then recruit people to start a terrorist camp up in Canada and then send all these new young men out. To, like that, none of that stuff ever had a possibility of happening. You get that, right? So like he had delusions of grandeur. Um, he, I mean, he might have had some sort of training when he was in the military. He might have there. There could be some government stuff that they implanted in his head back then that that made him want to pull this off for sure. But he was also like, he was also insane. Yeah, to think that any of this stuff would have ever happened. Also, the weirdest thing is trying to extort the U.S. government for money. Like, just I'm not a terrorist. I'm, I'm not telling him how to do his job. Uh, as terrorizing people but maybe financing his operation. Wouldn't it be easier, you know, the war on terror started, Al-Qaeda exists. Like, maybe reach out to Al-Qaeda, ask them for money to start your training camp in Canada. Maybe not the U.S. government ask them for the money. Mm -hmm. Like, there's probably better places to get money to start stuff, you know, than the U.S. government. Just, just thought. It's like, <laughs> I, I'm not... Trying to Sounds help. like you've got a pretty good plan here, Billy. <laughs> but like, it's I think it's just one of these ideas of grandeur and maybe getting the money from the U.S. government was part of his getting back at the government type thing. Yeah. Um, is Arian? Oh, Arian had to duck out. I think he's got something going on. Um, Big T, what do you think about the whole lead up? And we'll get into the the actual shootings in a second. But what do you think about Muhammad's past and all that? Um, I mean, in what sense? I'm just curious to know, like, your thoughts on his background. How much of this story were you familiar with before we started researching it? Zero. Uh, I feel we talked about it for a minute on here one time, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't remember any of it. I mean, obviously, this was I was five, so I don't I didn't know any of this. Yeah. Um. I mean, obviously, the guy was a crazo, but like. You can't. Uh, he was a crazo. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't, I don't have any thoughts other than that. He's a big time crazo. So let, let's get to the actual the events of uh, the DC sniper as it pertains to the Maryland Virginia district area. Uh, first shot came in October second, two thousand two. It was outside a Shoppers Food Warehouse about um, six o'clock at night, sometime or five twenty. 520 in the parking lot outside of a shopper's food warehouse. And it was James D. Martin. He's a 55 year old. He was walking to his car and he got shot. Small exit wound from behind, or excuse me, small entrance wound from behind, large exit wound in his chest. And that's all they had to go on. So the cops show up, they look at him, and it's not like. I, I guess I had always assumed it would be like in the movies or in the wire where they show up and they instantly like triangulate exactly where the shot came from. But with the sniper, you can't, it's, it's not that easy to do. They didn't have uh, probably like high quality surveillance footage that was immediately available to them. They couldn't, they didn't have that many witnesses because everyone's just like minding their business, walking around a parking lot, not paying attention to anybody else. 
and this dude just falls to the ground and he's dead. And so, like, yeah, it's it's kind of scary, but that's a very easy crime to get away with if you have no relation. So the cops, like, imagine being a police officer and that's the scene you come up on. And you probably have some experience seeing gunshots before. Mm. So you can figure out, okay, this is probably a, a high-powered rifle. Probably wasn't that close of a shot, especially if nobody saw it. So what are, what do you think from there? What what do you have to go on? Like, this guy has an enemy? Yeah, he got a, it was a mob hit. Then you do investigation on the guy because then you do investigation on the guy. And I think you, realize you, that you, you probably just originally say, okay, what's what's his personal life like? Does he have, is there a, a marital issue? Does he have any enemies at work? Who does he owe money to? That sort of thing. And and they don't come up with anything. So they're like, what the fuck? What can we do about this? It's like, that's got to be a very, it's a very easy crime to get away with. If they want to stop after one person, they probably could have stopped. There was a Russian philosopher. I forget the exact story, but he just randomly killed a guy with an ax just to see if he could get away with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, he did. Let me look this up. Russian acts random killing. I forget the exact one. Um, it was it was very long. Like I don't know. But um, because of that, when there's no way to link it back to you, you can get away with it. And so, just wanted to get into the type of vehicle and setup the DC snipers had. Okay, can I, can I go through a couple of the other shootings first? Yeah, and yeah. So just to set the stage, that was the first shooting. And so the cops don't have any way to figure out who this was, why they did it, and uh, and and what the person's motivation was. It seemed like a one-off killing. Then the next day, they shot four people. They And it was all in the morning. They shot Johnny Buchanan, 39-year-old, as he was out mowing his lawn. They shot... Prem Kumar Walakar, he was pumping gas at a gas station. Uh, Sarah Ramos, she was 34. That's when she sat on a bench, just sitting on a park bench. And Lori Rivera, she was 25 years old as she was vacuuming her car. And then later on that evening, they shot Pascal Charlotte uh, as he just stood at an intersection in Washington, D.C., so they just that, at that point we knew that something was up. How do you do all of that in a day? It's crazy, right? I don't know. I don't know. They they had like if they were if if it was random killings one every three weeks across the country, but like five in a day. Yeah, and they didn't catch these guys for another what three four weeks? Five in a day. It's crazy, and I don't know when the first call came in. I think it might have been on this day, on October 3rd, that there was like a white box van that that somebody saw speeding away from the scene of one of the shootings. And that's how the rumor got started. Okay, these guys are in a van, like a work van. And you never realize how many vans you see with, you know, the ladder on the back, that sort of thing. You never realize how many of those are on the road until there's somebody shooting up an entire city and everyone's looking for this van and then all of a sudden they're everywhere so they were called the dc snipers and some of the the murders were from like longer distances but it, how many of these were actually like that and how many were they pulled up shot somebody and kept driving what do you mean like not all of these were like snipers right no they were all snipers yeah all so, of them so the 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 one that we talked about when he was going cross country and they went up to the person's door that I think was a handgun. The one in the parking lot where they they stole like the laptop. That was a handgun. Starting on October second, these were all snipers. It was a Bushmaster rifle. Yeah, that was. I would just be like curious to see how far away they were. They said about enemies. on average is about eighty to ninety yards. So by the way, okay, everyone says they're snipers. They were using a long range rifle, but it was one that's typically used to kill deer, a Bushmaster. So. Um, I'm not sure of the exact caliber, but like a it's bush two two three. Yeah, yeah, two two three. So that type of you can take down a deer with that. And eighty to ninety yards isn't your typical like this wasn't like a like this wasn't an American sniper type shots. These shots were eighty to ninety yards, which in the field of like rifle hunting isn't that crazy. They're pot shots. I mean, calling these guys snipers, like yes, they were good shot, like they hit targets from eighty to ninety yards away, but it's not like they were, you know, doing insane sniper shots 
from you know 500 yards away taking out targets completely at random they were taking pot shots it was shooting fish in a barrel it was disgusting it was yeah it was very easy for them yeah they were shooting outside of the back of the um yeah, so of the trunk. So it, it, the, it, it, was, it was this one, uh, Ramos. She was the lady that was on the park bench. She got shot in the head on that first day. That was October third. Well, the second day, but the first day where they went nuts and just started shooting a lot of people. That morning, Ramos got shot in the head, and then there was a witness of that shooting that told the police that they just saw a box type truck, like a delivery vehicle or a white van, that was speeding away from it. So that that rumor got out there, that witness account got out there and starting on the very first day, it was like, OK, every every white box van or truck in the Washington, D.C. area, mm -hmm. that's a suspect right now. And there might have been a, a box van that was driving away. Turns out that was just not the right person. And that really threw the entire case off for a while because that's the only lead that we had to go on. They were not in a white box van. Billy, what were they in? They were in a uh, old police car. So the exact setup was a blue, um, was a blue. Sorry, did, did you say the first this? shooting? Oh did yeah, you say the, Did you say the first shooting was a, a woman on a park bench? That was one of the first ones. I thought because in the documentary I watched, it was a guy mowing his lawn. Yeah, so it, that was on the same Those day. Those were in the same day. Okay. So October 2nd, that the first person that got shot was in a shopper's food warehouse parking lot. Gotcha. That was October 2nd. Then on the 3rd, that's where they shot uh, Buchanan, John Buchanan, as he mowed his lawn. Yeah. He was the first person shot that day. Also shot that day uh, was a guy pumping gas, and then Sarah Ramos got shot on a bench. Uh, Lori Rivera got shot vacuuming her car outside of a metro station, and then... Pascal Charlotte got shot later on the day. So four people got shot in about two hours in Montgomery County, Maryland that morning. And then that's when it became that it hit the news, it hit the radio. Everybody freaked out. Everyone in Montgomery County was like, get inside, stay inside for the rest of the day. So their vehicle was a old police car that was a blue Chevrolet Caprice, which was designed to be a killing machine. So how they had it is the car had two holes in the trunk, one for the rifle, one for the scope. The two holes were there so that shots could be fired without opening the trunk. The car also had a darker than normal tinting on the back windows and all the um, all the uh, seats in the back were folded down so they could lay like, you know, a sniper team mm -hmm. shoot out of the back of the trunk, one hole for the bullet exiting the car, one hole so that they could see. And because of this, it was, you know, it was the perfect the perfect vehicle to get away with all this stuff because a van would have been almost too conspicuous that it was like you could have a, a rifle team in the back of a van. This Caprice, in the Chevrolet Caprice, like imagine like one of these highway cruisers uh, that we see today. It's a small car, like kind of like a Lincoln Town car in a way, mm -hmm. but it's a small, the back of the trunk, you'd never expect like two men to be laying on their, you know, laying prone in the back acting as a rifle team yeah so i mean it's crazy and that's why they could be so mobile and their car looked like an undercover police car it, it was like a boring looking car kind of yeah it was it didn't stand out or have any real like distinctive features besides the hole that was cut in the back that you have to really be looking for to notice um arian do you remember do you remember when the snipers first started yeah yeah we were i was in high school actually i was in high school and everybody was nobody knew what was going on it was scary as shit. there was just like so much panic because um i mean there there had been shootings before but this was like really unique in the sense that it was like so like well i hate to phrase it like this was so well orchestrated and thought out and it was um you didn't know where like everybody was like, yo, you got to stay inside. Don't gather in groups, like that kind of thing. It was really weird. There was a lot of panic around it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, you're right. They they got away with, they had a plan and they were able mm -hmm. to execute on the plan. And it was just kind of a really scary, fucked up plan that they had that they ended yeah. up like really excelling at. Uh, but it, it shows you that if you commit, like we were talking earlier a second ago, I know you had to duck out real quick, but if you yeah. want to, if you want to get away with murder, 
completely random murders are actually relatively easy to get away with if you just stop mm-hmm. committing the murders after like one or two because there's no yeah. the police have a hard time investigating it unless there's like surveillance footage of you yeah and i mean that's and that's usually like that's usually the thing like when you talk about like uh you know mental health issues like it's hard to just to do one murder or two you know like if it's not mm-hmm. if there's like no like real known motive as far as like revenge or you know personal because most murders the major- overwhelming majority of murders are like by somebody you know mm-hmm. um and so like serial killers that's how they usually get caught is they have a pattern they have that's how that's how they get investigated and so um yeah when you start to develop a pattern and you start that you, that's when you start leaving you know breadcrumbs i mean there are a lot of murders that go un unsolved but um a lot of them get caught because it's it's a pattern mm-hmm like uh, even in that new um, that Dahmer shit that we were talking about, yeah, yeah. Um, if he would have just stopped, he would have got away with the all of them almost for sure, almost yeah. But when you get Which away with it, you can't think. stop because you just think yep. you'll never get caught. Yeah, because a person that would that would commit a random murder is probably the same type of person that would continue to kill people. So there's currently yeah. we were talking about this earlier, Arian, but there's currently a serial killer in California, Stockton, right now. Killing yeah, I heard about that. Thirty-five, about sixty-five that, yeah. year old men, five victims, totally random, yeah. not robbing. So, this still happens. the The lack of motive is something that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. So, yeah, so they were looking. They were looking for the white van. So they were able to get away with that first day, and everybody panicked on the first day. I remember um, Charles Moose was the he was the head of the Montgomery County. I think it was Montgomery County Sheriff. He was in charge of the investigation because all these shootings at first were in Montgomery County, Maryland. And he was on the news and he was just like asking the public, like, please help me because we don't have anything. They all appear to be completely random. All we know is that there's a white box truck. Please help me out. I was driving a white van at the time. I got pulled over several times. We had to put up a sticker in the back or a little poster in the back saying, it's not me. Please don't pull me over because we couldn't drive anywhere. And everybody is actually crazy, not just like getting pulled over by the police all the time, but every car that would drive past me would like slow down and stare at me. And you could tell that they were like, is that him? I was like driving to school, um, but everyone saw my van. They were, they were fucking suspicious about it. It was a Chevy Astro uh, and it was it was tough. It, it was a really strange time because I was scared too, but I was just trying to make my way to school. And then people would be just like either one, avoiding my car two seeing me p- holding up their phones about to like call the police. Cause they're like, we've got one, we've got a white van or did, did this develop your, did this develop your empathy for profiling? <laughs> it might. I, I did get profiled. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is the start of your liberalism. I, I feel your pain. <laughs> I know what it's like too. I know what it's like. <laughs> Were uh, you not like, maybe I'll take the bus for a couple of weeks? No, nah, I didn't want to take the bus. Too cool? I had football practice afterwards. I don't want to take the late bus home, and sometimes there's no That's late fair. late bus. Um, Wait, y'all had like buses that left at different times? Yeah, we had a late bus. Actually, we, there was no late, late bus Did after it? football practice. There was a bus before sports and then a bus after sports. Oh, really? I never took a bus after sports. All of ours sports. just left right when school ended. They're like, get home when you can. What about football practice? They there was a late did. bus, but they didn't, no they didn't have like, um, I didn't do all the stops. Yeah. It was like, we can get you. I remember my late bus could get me like a half mile away from my house. <laughs> like, okay, you can walk the rest of the way. <laughs> we kind of care. Yeah. But no, that I, I did have another van. I had my mom's van that I could take sometimes. And so I would, there were a couple of days when I was like, I don't really feel like driving the white van today. I'll, leave, I'll, I'll stick my mom with that. I'll drive the green che- uh, Ford Windstar and try Jeez. to take that in. Uh, so after that first day where they went nuts, uh, police chief Charles Moose was on the case. He didn't really have that many leads besides the white truck. And they were trying to figure out what to do next. The next victim was the very next day uh the very next day i believe that's when they started oh it was uh it was dean myers and he got shot in prince william county virginia uh, so that that expanded the case quite a bit because until then 
Everybody had been in Montgomery County, Maryland, except for the last person of the day that was shot in D.C., but only like one block into D.C. So initially it was like a Montgomery County problem. Then the next day it's like, okay, we're going to go. That's about, if you're not familiar with the D.C. area, Montgomery County, Maryland, from where these shootings are, down to Prince William, Virginia. It's, I think it's probably about like an hour with no traffic. It's about 70 miles away. So it expanded the problem quite a bit. Now this is a Virginia problem. And also what that meant is everybody in the entire area was thinking to themselves, I could be next. It was no longer like Northern Montgomery County. It was the entire metropolitan area, which is massive. And it sprawls out like all the way almost to West Virginia on the West side. And then all the way to basically the Atlantic Ocean on the East side, the entire area. I would say like from the whole DMV, I would say from Pennsylvania, from the Southern border of Pennsylvania down to Richmond, Virginia, and then West Virginia to the Atlantic Ocean, that entire part of the country was thinking after this shooting in Spotsylvania, or in, uh, yeah, in Spotsylvania, that entire region was thinking, I can't get out of my car because I might get shot. Whoa. It was fucking terrifying. And it, it was yeah. a very effective way of, of doing a, a terrorist attack. And also, let's remember that this was, this was a year after 9-11 pretty much. Yeah. And so yeah. everybody in that region was thinking... We thought it was Al Qaeda at first. Mm -hmm. That was like the natural thing yeah. because there was the anthrax attack and yeah, I was about to say that was where I was just about to say that because it was nine eleven and then the anthrax and like and so like everybody was like on high alert anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, I I distinctly remember thinking this is a terrorist. It's well, it was a terrorist, but I was thinking it was like Al Qaeda. And then, was it though? Because how do we are we defining terrorism by political motivation? Was it political? Well, <laughs> Billy was talking about some of his political motive. I I personally think that his motivation was like he he got fucked up in the head. He had violent tendencies mm -hmm. in his time in the military. He was exposed to probably some chemical things that made him sick, uh, and he always had these like violent tendencies. And then he got into a bitter custody battle where he ended up like kidnapping his own children. And he was mm -hmm. mad at his ex-wife. And so he he wanted he you he like focused his violent tendencies in an area, a part of the country near where his ex-wife was to make sure that she was one of the people who was scared. So Billy thinks that there were political motivations. No, no, no the so. political motivations which he told which Malvo testified to. Malvo believed Muhammad when he told him that so basically he they were trying to terrorize the U.S. to the point where they would pay them $10 million in ransom in order to establish a utopian society for 140 homeless black children on a Canadian compound. So that camp was going to be where uh, 140 children would be trained as terrorists to keep terrorizing the United States. I don't think it was per se like directly linked he just wanted to terrorize the United States and he used those exact words, this idea to extort the United States create a camp in Canada to then train homeless children to terrorize the United States. And I feel like I uh, did a direct correlation. Like this guy gives me tons of Manson vibes. Manson wanted to start a race war and, you know, like uh, had all these people under him that were totally indoctrinated and radicalized to do his bidding and kill people. Um, and that's where I see like Malvo sort of wanted to create like, you know, this group that would terrorize the United States for, whatever reasons he had there were uh, authorities did say that he sort of had um uh rants and drawings that featured figures like osama bin laden saddam hussein and characters from the film series the matrix um but they're sort of dismissed the investigators reportedly said they had all but eliminated terrorist ties or political ideologies and motive he was a member of the muslim brotherhood but i think this wasn't this didn't seem to have much that may have just been like a like a, a I don't think it was more like a he did reference jihad but I think that was the only thing that could describe his hatred for the United States and the system that taken away his children and done all these things I mean I don't think he was like I guess it depends on how you how you classify terrorism cuz like, definitely a terrorist well, so they they well yeah you can terrorize but like how they classify it is like it's like a it's specifically like a political uh motivation and so that's if it's like if you want to start a race war that's that's that would be domestic terrorism if you want mm -hmm. to um 
uh it, it, it is it, it's not as black and white as it seems um like there are just sometimes like psychos i uh, would... who want to who want to take people out but there are some people who are politically motivated to do so this doesn't seem to me like it fits that case but i, I mean, would... it, it's very it's semantics mm -hmm. i think he's yeah. definitely a terrorist but i w don't think he's a religious extremist that's something that what what would be his what was his political motivation? Because I, I, I honestly don't know. I couldn't. He there, want, It just seemed really spotty. His political motivation was to establish this camp where he'd train homeless children to terrorize the United States. I think that that seems to be his only motivation. Incredibly specific. By yeah, the way. that's mm -hmm. why it's like Manson esque. That's why I think he could be like MK Ultra. He he wanted to start his own like program. Yeah. He had a startup. He was looking for funding. Seed yeah, he was looking for Series A investment in his startup. His startup just happened to be, he was looking to disrupt the United States, the, was, the world. Really. He, he didn't like how the United States had a monopoly on violence. So he was yeah. like, I, I want some of the violence. He's like, you know what? The, the, uh, the old antiquated legacy system of violence in the United States is it's clunky. Yeah. I'm doing a, a lean, agile startup. Right. We're more mobile, a startup for the for the next generation. Right. Employing of employing the youth yeah. to do your bidding. Like Papa from Stranger Things. Didn't watch it. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say yes. Sure. Did you not watch Stranger Things? I saw either? season one. Oh. It's just too much to get into. Yeah, there's too many shows. I'm, Arian? I'm on season four. I'm on season four. D isn't it kind of like Papa, just like employing children to take over the world? With MK Ultra vibes? It in a in a sense, yeah, yeah, I would say so, yeah. I I, I think as I watch a lot of like villains and shows, I I, I tend to side with them more than not. <laughs> Be honest. Yeah, yeah. Vill villains make sense a lot of the times, not in real world. Sometimes they do in the real world, but a lot of times in TV shows they make sense. Like <laughs> the Joker. You think the Joker? He makes that. Oh, he makes sense. That's such a, Absolutely. that's such a, there's so many dudes I know who like are all about the Joker and it's just creepy. How is it? Cre he makes sense. Yeah. You, you sound like the low key you're giving. That's some incel vibes, bro. You may, I'm, I'm listening. Talk me out of it. No, seriously. The old, like all the people who are like, oh. I'm not worried about who else aligns with him. You can find a Venn diagram where you align okay. with anybody. Convince me that the Joker doesn't make sense. He's and convince like, me, and convince me that Batman does. Well, there is Batman's trying to fight evil, in a sense. People who harm other people. Yeah. The Joker's just the Joker's like rejected by society, and he's like big. Like the Joker would do DC sniper type shit. Okay, that's a horrible mm -hmm. argument. If that's trying to. Well, he he hates the system that wronged him, and he wants mm -hmm. to get back the system. Same way. He wants, to, he wants to correct this. He wants to show why the system in itself is is bullshit. And Batman symbolizes. He's the epitome of that system. Right. A so, rich man who goes around fighting poor people. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. The penguin. The penguin's pretty wealthy, if you remember. Penguin is wealthy. The, pe the penguin's but, very wealthy. But that's not, that's not that's not Batman's <laughs> like only targets. Like he just fights people well he's doing like fight he's, he's doing it angry because his his parents were killed and so he's like we have we have a crime problem poor people killed his parents <laughs> he's a republican thousand percent Batman's a republican. No, no question but you could say i need to watch batman john muhammad <laughs> john Mu john muhammad wants to correct the system his way whoa, of correcting whoa, 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 whoa. let's i'm not Siding with the DC, right, right. But I'm, I'm talking trying about to, the Joker. Under bro. under your framework, John Muhammad mm -hmm. wants to correct the system that wronged him, took his children, um, you mm -hmm. know, sent him over to war, uh, made him exposed to dangerous chemicals. So his way of doing that is ex like holding the U.S. government for ransom, getting that ten million dollars, and then getting 140 homeless uh, black children to then radicalize them to change the system that he was wronged by. But his means of doing yeah. that are shooting innocent people that have nothing to do with the problem right so the, well they're, they're, they're complicit that you could say they're complicit they're cogs in the machine okay billy um quick question uh, I'm, I'm not actually how, i'm trying to judge no I'm i don't not think actually. you can no no I, that, just, I just have I, one quick follow-up i have one follow-up on that billy 
Um, the thirteen-year-old kid. No, I'm not vibing. Aran for, Brown. I'm trying. Well, you to, did just say that they're cogs, cogs in the machine. No, but by his ideology. By the way, I'm well, his no ideology way. is flagrantly wrong. I'm trying. That's what I'm trying I, to say. We, the Joker's yeah. ideology is flagrantly I know, wrong. I know. We, we all we all know what Billy. Yeah, Billy's, I don't want anyone to say I'm. I like Billy's not actually doing what what you think. I'm just he's trying doing. to because all these people love the Joker. That George Kittle's got a Joker tattoo. He's got a couple screws loose. <laughs> I'm just saying, better watch that guy. No, I love George, um, but this whole Joker worship is kind of concerning. I because it's very it's no, very school shooterish. I I I don't think it's that concerning. Like the Joker is it's a fucking movie, and you can watch the Joker and not be like panicked and have it change your entire worldview. I think whoever was doing the marketing for the Joker did a great job. By like even before it hit theaters, it's like be careful. This movie will turn people into incels. Yeah, it made people be like, "Oh shit, this movie's dangerous." Is you know? is Andrew Tate the Joker? There's no better. There's no better. <laughs> no, he don't make any sense. <laughs> there's no better advertising you can have for any piece of art that you put out than for somebody to be like, "Yo, this is dangerous," and for have that to be the storyline that goes along with it. Did anybody no, actually? I never said at the time. Did anybody get radicalized oh, by, sh- by the Joker? Sh- I'm sure the guy who shot up the Dark Knight. That, I don't think that guy was actually the Aurora red. shooter. He the had Aurora shooter had the red hair. He had stuff. red hair. He had he had face paint on. Dude, if you if you've ever read anything about James Holmes, the Aurora shooter, he was dressed up. He didn't have. I don't think he had face paint on. No, but he he, had, he, he had dyed his hair. hair. But he did that because that was him turning into his violent version of himself, the Joker. So he could no. So he could disassociate with the acts that he was doing. It didn't have anything to do with the actual movie. People thought that it did because it was the Dark Knight. It, w- it happened during that movie, um, but I don't think that was his I- ideology at all. I think that's something that a lot of people talked about. In hindsight, looking back, and if I'd seen the movies, maybe I'd say it was like the Joker. Yeah, I so he hadn't even. Oh wait, he, he hadn't even seen see the movies. It. Yeah, I do. I think that the. I don't think the Joker hopefully didn't cause any shooters, but I do think it radicalized people. It's definitely Some people. A, it's definitely a weird movie. It's definitely like creepy vibes. I think it's like one of those movies where it's people see a reflection of themselves in it kind it, of like if you're able to be radicalized by the joker in a batman movie you were off kilter to begin with it's like yeah. um when when they blamed marilyn manson for columbine i think it was pete townsend i'm gonna get the right pete this time because i fucked up a couple weeks ago i said that pete frampton uh was under investigation for child pornography it was actually pete townsend isn't Peter Frampton a musical artist? They're both musical artists. Oh. Pete Townsend was a guitar player from The Who. Got it. And when uh, when the Columbine shooting happened, they blamed Marilyn Manson. His quote was almost exactly Big T's quote. He said, I think if, if you shoot up a school because some shithead with a guitar told you to, you're a shithead yourself and you would have done it anyways. Correct. Yeah. That was just your like catalyst. Yeah, that was your that was your catalyst. And it gave you something to like base your identity on a little bit yeah no normal person saw batman and was like you know what i i'm gonna shoot up a school now right and and they're starting to run that same playbook back a little bit now where they're blaming uh violent video games violent music society uh for like school shooters that's exactly what they did back in like the 90s i'm I'm gonna have to say madden did make me run harder though that's a good point. Yep. Okay. Like, <laughs> using the truck stick in Madden did make me like be like, I, I'm going to do this in a game. Yeah. And truck people. What about Vision Cone? Did that make you a better quarterback? No. Yeah, because <laughs> Passing Cone sucked. <laughs> no, that, that's... Arian, when you were playing Madden, did you did you ever draw any inspiration from like hitting the left trigger, right trigger, the spin button? Did you incorporate any of that into your game? No. Um... <laughs> We I used to like like mess around like on Friday walkthroughs and stuff like that like do the L one R one like jump jump cuts but not in real life. That's that must have been so sick to be that athletic to be able to pull off the video games in real life and make them look like they did in the video games. Well, they base the video games off of them. Yeah, I know, but like <laughs> it would be cool to have that ability to do the the side shuffle and get like yeah. three yards laterally. Wait, but you can't do that. I can't, I, not to the same effect that you could. Yeah, that's true. But you can still do it. Yeah, I'm more of a DK Metcalf. Yeah, that's that. You, I you got some. <laughs> I got some wiggle. No, I I never. You got some. You, your calves Your calves are pretty athletic looking. Thank you, Aaron. What Who do you think you say? owned more, Arian or DK Metcalf? DK. 
DK, because the I, only thing DK I, has I is his speed, and I beat him in a race. So Arian, like, Arian didn't play cornerback. He's got hands like a cornerback. I mean, that's a compliment. I actually hate when you make the you know slander. What? I actually hate it because he's because as someone who gets made fun of for like totally unrelated my football, like he had amazing hands. Yeah, we're not down talking hands. his fucking hands. I think like yeah, if you look at it uh, across the board in the United States by percentages, you probably Yo. had top one percent hands. What percentage? Point what oh, percentile oh, oh. in the NFL? I don't know. Of I, skill position guys in the NFL. I have to consult I, the batting. I've tied top five hands. Listen, I used to tell all, top five I had people. Hands. Yes, I had I had better hands than including receivers. Anybody, anybody on my squad aside from Andre Johnson and DeAndre Hopkins. A lot. I would. I would tell okay, them, so I would let's tell just them that. let's just go through receivers. So in you the were NFL the top six percent on your own team. Got it. Yes. So those two, Calvin Johnson. Are we conceding that he had better hands than you? Yeah. Randy Maybe. Moss. Julio Jones. Yep. Randy Moss. Yeah, you, you, uh, I mean, we're already at five. I yeah, played well, with. Well, you said you said top five in the NFL. I thought we were talking about percentile. Oh, okay. Yeah, so ninety fifth percentile, you mean? Yeah. No, no. Top, well, I don't. Well, however you phrase there's it, a, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, top I thought, five percent. I thought yeah, you meant top, top five people. There's okay. a, a lot of, but even no. still, there's a lot of wideouts even in the NFL who are super athletic, like can run crisp routes. They're tall. They have all the intangibles of a wide receiver, but they have like like decent enough hands to just like get by. Whereas they'll get open mm -hmm. on a post route, they'll just catch it, take it to the house. But like, they're not doing what Odell's doing. They're not doing what uh, Pickens did. Like yeah. they're not like, they don't have that canny like, ability to yeah. locate the ball in the air. Arian Good has hands that ability. are more rare in receivers yeah. than you think because a lot of it is like routine catches like you know who I, you know who has a lot better hands than people give them credit for are quarterbacks because yeah. they play catch so much from throwing and so quarterbacks have really good hands and so receivers tight ends i think that's just like a hit or miss because they're just so it's like very routine it's like it can be it's a skill set that can be developed but like truly great hands like that's some shit you just born with, and I've always had that shit. And my, cause it's because my dad was a receiver. My dad was a receiver, and I just grew up catching that motherfucker all day. And I, I feel like tight ends usually have have to have better hands because they're not as open so much. Mm -hmm. Because they're always catching with a linebacker draped on them, and those guys have to have like pillow hands. No, don't most quarterbacks though when they're getting warmed up they have somebody that catches the ball for them and hands it to them not until they're that's like that's like game day that's like game day yeah so like is that just so you don't practice. jam a finger and yeah that's so you don't and because like a lot of the times which i used to fucking hate quarterbacks they like on game day that shit just be humming i used to tell them like yo calm the fuck down touch i used to remember i was telling you billy yeah. At, the, at yeah. the facility, I was like, bro, put touch on it. Like, nobody wants to catch. I mean, think about it. You went across the middle and got almost broke a fucking rib. Nobody wants to catch that shit, bro. There are there are some throws that warrant that, but the majority of times, like, I remember I was um, I was uh, uh, doing, like, seven-on-sevens, and, and Peyton actually came into town. And Peyton always did seven-on-sevens with a lot of the guys. And so it was Peyton and Eric Ainge, and I'm just sitting in the back as running backs. We, you know, we get to see from the um, from the back view, and I'm watching Eric Ainge and Peyton Manning throw, and Eric Ainge is getting the ball there faster, but Peyton Manning's shit was so much more smooth, and there's so much more touch to it. Like nobody wants to catch a hard ball. Like there are times where it's necessary, but the touch goes way way farther. But also, to your point, Billy, I think tight ends run different routes so yeah. it's the the balls that they catch are a little i would say a little easier to catch um those long balls the trajectory it's a little it's a little more difficult to catch but you, yeah. you make a valid point when you're tracking it like they can they track themselves so well under the ball that it's easier for them to make the catch because mm -hmm. they have the mobility to put themselves in an easier catch I am looking mm -hmm. at Arian Foster's 96 overall uh, Legends card in Madden from a year or two ago, I guess. Um, every running stat is green. 94 speed, 96 acceleration on down the board. Uh, the the receiving stats, though. Uh, so catch is an 82, which is yellow 
on here. Yeah, but that's because you, I, I, I catch in traffic is a 73. We're starting to get orange. Uh, deep route running is a 65. That's Ooh. that's red. But, uh, medium route running 75. Short route running 87. That one's a uh, light green. But like, if you looked at a wide receiver, right, like who may have even played running back in high school in college that. Like, because they don't show those skills as much, they're not going to record them as such. I'm just telling you what Madden said. I, it's just interesting, though. Like, it, would you say for downfield yeah, routes? Yeah, but that's just Wait, so that's silly. Six, that's six, I'll put it like this. Matter of fact, I might have this here. video still. I ain't going to say who it is. Maybe I said it on the podcast already. But when Bill O'Brien, because I used to tell Kub, Kubiak, who had his running backs do the same thing for years. But even he started to recognize it after a while, like, yo, we got to utilize the skill set. And so I started getting out in the back. I'm thinking about it. I had two 600-yard receiving seasons, and I was a bell cow running back. That's insane. Mm -hmm. That's that's not, that's not that's not hard of. Like, I had no, like, screen passes and, and check downs. That's, ex that's extreme. And so when Bill O'Brien got there, they were watching the film, and they were like, yo, we get – we have like a special talent. And so they started lining me up outside. And so during uh, OTAs, they started lining me up against our one, our number one cornerback. And I was routing him. I was routing my number one quarterback. Even in, uh, when I was on practice squad my, 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 my rookie year, how I, how I turned the coaches' heads, this is how I turned the coaches' heads. I was going against our three or four cornerback because I had to play scout team uh, receiver. I had to play everything. I was routing the shit out of, out of our third corner. I was routing his ass. And so, like, that's when they was like, I remember my coach pulled me in. He was like, yo, you keep doing shit like this. They're going to pull you up. And so I was just routing people. They put me at tight end, routing people. They don't, when my era of running backs, they just didn't split us out like that. It just wasn't a thing. A Damian Thomason, like, Damian Thomason would have ate in this era. Oh, my God, he would have ate in this era. But he was just a bell cow back, like. It's just it was just a different era, it's a different time. Twenty two hundred all purpose yards in twenty ten is pretty impressive. Yep. Or yards from scrimmage, not all purpose yards. Yeah. I wish that I wish that that had happened more recently so we could give it a, a cool hashtag. You know, like CJ two K. Did you ever have did you ever have like two K AF? That would have been cool. Nah. Two thousand really big fun. on like branding myself like that this is the most i've ever talked about my football skills publicly i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's actually interesting to hear because we bust your balls about it but at the end of the day yeah. i'd say you, you did have better hands than everybody else on this podcast so it, it's it's interesting to hear your perspective on that fuck off pmc <laughs> i have some pretty good hands <laughs> <laughs> see here's billy being kind of serious like billy <laughs> billy took what i thought was like uh, just a slight playful jab at Arian because it's obviously not true. And Billy's like, "Well, actually, there's." A, I'm pulling up my. There's a lot of truth, up, and also a highlight tape It's funny because Billy grass. is like your biggest stand to be like, "Yo, we need to actually low key respect Arian more because he was really good <laughs> at his craft." But also, like at the same time, my hands, my hands were a little bit better. I think. <laughs> I, think I think you guys need to start looking at where I, I'm coming from in the hand department as well. Just, just saying. <laughs> Billy's hands are too soft to be good. I have sick hands. Okay. Uh, you do You do have some Drake hands. <laughs> I don't have Drake hands. I'm just joking, man. I was <laughs> Big T got some Drake hands for sure. <laughs> Did, um, work, worked, worked on you. It worked on you. You know what? All right. We joked, and now we got to do it for real. Yeah. I'll do it for real. Let's get You're on some You're not getting grass. off the line. We're gonna get some cleats and we're gonna we're gonna play football as a podcast. It's gonna be it's gonna be you're gonna get press coverage, you're gonna get jacked up on the line. Great content. Well, I, clients see, will be entertained afterwards. Sure. Let's do see it. that happened once and then I double moved his ass, got behind him, <laughs> and then the balls just fluttered up there. Big T, you didn't get behind. I, right. I was trying to explain to you this on the field, but you were so impressed was, with yourself that you were behind me that you didn't him. understand I what I was him. doing. When you have somebody that you know you're faster than and can make up ground, I'm playing your hip. And so at that point, I'm not playing you, I'm playing the ball. 
A well placed yeah. ball, I catch it. No, Big T, you <laughs> no, ran the wrong I route. I, I, have I know because he, I, I got, I got jammed have inside. A, well, he had inside on me. You can't just do you that. You don't bro. have a burst. You don't have a burst. So in my head, I'm thinking. I have recovery speed, so I'm playing your hip. So a well-thrown ball, I'm running past you to go knock it down. I see what you're saying. I just uh, do, you, do you understand? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you took an interesting. Um, you did get a step on him. I was behind him. No the step he, was that Aaron. May, you have to go back and watch the film because I think the the best part of that route by far was when he put the hezzy on you after he got that initial step, and he did a fake to the inside to get you to turn your hips, and. He dabbed accidentally in the middle. Like he was doing that, such a good head and shoulders fake that he stops and dabs to go to the inside and then releases outside your hip. And then, yeah, he did. He had a step on you. Billy didn't hit him in stride, but there was a step there. He ran the wrong route. And I'd say the correct I had route to is the one that Arian gets open. Was baiting was baiting the quarterback by making you look open by being a step behind you when he knew he could make up that step and pick it off. You know who's, you know who's great at that? Who? Two people. Chat Bailey, yeah, and du- and Darrell Revis. Darrell Revis was crazy. Make that, him dog. look, he, but he, then he made you made you look like that was open, and he just had that little burst. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then but then what happened on the next one? Fake outside, rip back, get inside leverage on him, stop, catch the ball, turn up field, I, touchdown. I, I told him to do a sit it route to box like... you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was I, like, I, was socks, I was socks. I him. I was like, I was which like, is a fair uh, thing. For the athletic ability of me and you. I told, so the original route, instead of him going long, I told him to run a 15-yard stop and box you out, and I just put it on you. And it would have worked. He was inside on me. Well, you're supposed to stop. That's why I had to adjust. Okay. D of a wide receiver just do whatever he wants. I think we got to run it back. I think we got to run it back. Absolutely. That's, That's the only... There's a there's a little turf field near here. Mm-hmm. What's what's your ex- field of expertise, Big T? So if you're gonna step into my domain, I'm gonna step into yours. Like is it like axe throwing at a bar or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've wanted to do that for so long, and I still haven't. I'd, we say, do I'd that. say getting upset about articles online. That's <laughs> owning owning the libs. You could All never right. own libs right. like the. All right, <laughs> me and Big T, we gotta own the libs somehow, some way. <laughs> Speaking of it, speaking of, I don't really fuck with him either. <laughs> speaking of fields of expertise, I, I competed with PFT last night in the dozen, and I did say, I need you to brush up on your white people music and movies. That's what I feel like is gonna. I feel like I could. I, I'm pretty good at that too. I feel like I'm pretty good, like because a lot of them are older. With the, I'm saying, I feel like I'm pretty good with the white music that is corny. No, no, no. That's the one I suck at. Like, like the white music that's like rooted in black music. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm good with that. I'm really good with that. Like, so like the Beatles or, you know, stuff like that. It's that not that old. In, I would in, say in, like in, 90s it, and early 2000s. That's when I, white I start like, when you start doing like, like past Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, NSYNC. That kind no, of that, stuff. That's a good era I'm not, to know. I'm not knowledgeable. I think the answer is just usually Maroon Five or Imagine Dragons. How familiar are you with with Three Doors I know, Down? I know. I know. I know. Morning. I got Three Doors Down. <laughs> yeah, of course I you have, do. I got Maroon Five in. Um, oh, okay. I got Oasis. Or is that just a song? No, that's a band. That's a Sounds band. like you're very familiar Today with. Today is gonna be the day. They sung that right. Wonderwall. Yep. yep. Big Man City fans. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That Green Day maybe. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, okay. These are these are good ones to know. Songs, I know of them. I just don't like. But white movies uh, also. White movies, white movies. Okay, I feel like if if it's the rom com shit, I'm hey, I'm ten things I hate about you, something about Mary. Let's go. Rom coms okay. are my these shit. are okay, this Arian is encouraging got, to got hear. Got rom coms on lock. I love rom coms, but like when it comes to like, I don't know what else. There's just a lot of generic, like, movies that a 36-year-old white woman would have seen that are used (laughs) on that show. Pop culture in general, I'm not the best with, um, unless it's, like, hip-hop or, uh, you know, urban. And then there's... I'm not good. good. There's NFL every show, baseball every show, baseball is you. NFL, I got. I got NFL. 
College and I basketball. got basketball. Yeah, there's NBA every show, right? Mm -hmm. I got basketball. Basketball is my, my my shit. Science? That's my shit. If we do any science, I don't know. If what was our good. what was our NBA question last night? An Indiana Pacers forward who made his only career All Star team in two thousand four. Yeah, two thousand four. Yep. Indiana Pacers. I actually forget who it was. I was hoping you would remember because I kind of forgot. I, I know the I know the Hang on. second question. Hmm. But th that's the type of questions that that they are. Damn, that's tough. Is it Al Harrington? No, it it's wasn't. A good guess. Him. I'm I'm looking it up right now. I think now. he was Hang still on. at Florida though. Wait, was he at Florida? Al Harrington. You're thinking of Al Horford. Al Horford, yeah. Al Harrington was on that Pacers team. It was uh, 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 well, O'Neal. No, um, that was our guess. Jermaine O'Neal. That was our guess. It wasn't him. Uh, who was it, dude? I don't see it on this list. Antonio D Antonio Davis is it Antonio Davis. No, that's this way before him. Or is it? Who was it? I'm, I'm trying to find out who it was because it doesn't look like it's on. I don't. I have forgotten. Forward? It gotta be Jermaine O'Neal. It, it wasn't. It wasn't, Ar it wasn't. Was it Ron Artest then? No. Uh, who was it? Wait. Do we gotta get back to the sniper doc? We probably should because we have. Give me one second. Oh, it was uh, a little bit under an hour left. One second. I gotta know who this is now, though. Uh, two thousand four. It it can't have been two thousand four because the Pacers All Stars were Ron Artest and Jermaine O'Neal. That's what I'm saying. Well, I mean that that was the information okay, maybe, given to me. Maybe I got we that have correct. the year wrong, but okay, it's that kind of question. And then the other one was uh, the same, but the Nets. I think it was. So is it Kenyon Martin? So in 2012, Malvo claimed that he was sexually abused by John Allen Muhammad. Here he goes. So that adds you're another. Like the, you're like the podcast dad. <laughs> so let's think of a better way to transition back there. <laughs> <laughs> but please, but hold on. I, I'm all for getting back on track. But you gotta tell me what the answer to that question. I'm was. doing my best, man. I can't. I can't find it. Uh, well, what you was you the answer? Because in 2004, it had to be one of those two. That's what I thought too. Okay, here's 2005. That's what I'm looking at. Also, you know, I got timeout. I got pee break. All right, Billy's yeah. taking a, a timeout pee break. Am I a pee guy? Yeah, Jonathan Bender, Austin Crozier, Jeff Foster. Oh five, Jermaine O'Neal was their only All Star oh, game. I think I think it was Danny Granger. It was it was Danny Granger. Ah, uh, damn. Okay, but that, you said 04, though. Was it 04? Was it what that year was, it, was it? Maybe 05. I don't know. I forget what year it was. Okay, it's cool. I mean, yeah, I feel like I get the right year there. We'll, we'll be all right. All right, we'll dive into that. Um, we'll dive into some more trivia. Maybe we'll get you. We'll run back some old trivia questions that Jeff has used next week on nano dosing how does that sound a little, a little warm up when when is our because it's me big t and maddie ain't it when when do we do that uh it starts soon we might we don't know when ours will be yeah. but the the show started this week so could be any time oh damn okay just uh, you'll know like a, like a few days in advance all right before we get gotcha. back we're gonna we're gonna get back to the the topic of today's episode but it's brought to you by sport clips Sport Clips haircut has developed an all-new relaxing blend of chamomile, lavender, and eucalyptus for their hot steam towel. If you want to try this new scent, you've got to make sure and ask for the MVP haircut experience. I love their hot steam towel at Sport Clips. It's amazing. It's the best way to end a haircut experience. And now they've made it so that it's got this super relaxing scent, eucalyptus. It's very, very pleasing. I love Sport Clips. It's the best place for a guy to get their haircut. So the MVP experience... It comes with a hot towel, massaging shampoo, and of course, a great looking haircut. It doesn't matter if you're balding or have the noggin of a Sasquatch. Sport Clip stylists have been specifically trained to cut men's hair. They've literally seen it all. Just another reason why Sport Clips is the pros when it comes to cutting men's hair. All right, let's get back into it. Billy's a, a pee guy. He's the official pee guy. Just always taking piss breaks at inopportune times. That's kind of what he does. But... um. Diving back into the DC <laughs> sniping, <laughs> he is. He's a P guy. Every every podcast has a P guy, right? 
I think Billy's ours. It's not me. It's not you. It's not Big T. It's not Avery. Mad Dog's the P girl. But no P. Everybody see Maddie get up like that. No, but um, she did earlier. I did earlier. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, also, she's the only girl, so she would be the P girl. Yeah, I take the title. Gotcha. So, uh, diving back into the DC sniper, he shot some people down in Virginia, and that expanded the search. And so now you've got the entire region in a panic. And then uh, it was on that day when he shot he shot the people down in Spotsylvania. That's when the entire region went crazy. That's when like lockdowns and shit started because nobody knew what to do. If you know all the shootings were in Montgomery, it seemed like just one person going on a localized crime spree. But then once it expands to D.C., it expands to Virginia, then you have like actual lockdowns at school going. So this was really day three of the shootings. And at this point, they, they cancel all outdoor sports at the local schools. All outdoor activities are canceled. Uh, teachers start putting up newspapers, start taping newspapers to the inside of their windows in the classroom so that if a sniper's outside, they can't see inside. They start changing where they pick up and drop off kids for the buses at school. So it's not visible from a parking lot. They try to isolate people as much as possible. Um, when you're at the gas station, you just end up going to your car or you end up sitting in your car and then like ducking out real quick to get the gas, pump it, duck back in. Billy, I was just talking about how um, after like day three, uh-huh. that's when they change. Like all sports are canceled. Outdoor sports are canceled. That we had sucks. We had football practice in our gym. And man, football coaches. That's tough. Football coaches hate gym practice. Gym practice. But they kind of love it because they're like, this is where we're going to find out how tough you are. Yeah. I remember we practiced in our like common area one time, which is like a hard rubber floor. And they were they were giddy about that. They were pumped. Oh, yeah. One time. Well, hold on. Like you were hitting and tackling? Yeah. Yeah, we. That's just irresponsible. Actually, no, but this is actually. Yeah. Do you hear the most fucked up story in Pop Warner? We were like learning how to tackle, and it was we were we had a bad game where we weren't tackling well, and uh, this was when we were still in camp, and we were pl- we played a scrimmage against another team and we weren't tackling well, so we had to do hitting drills, and during the hitting drills, guys were running out of the cones. And they weren't running straight towards each other, so we had to Ooh, do soft. Yeah, well, Coaches we were that shit. We too. were we were in uh, fourth grade. Why are you why are you <laughs> juking, hey, son? Hey, what, let your nuts let your nuts yeah. hang and get this. It wasn't. Doggy. Yeah, it wasn't me. But basically, what they did is they made us do tackling drills in the hallway. This ain't this ain't uh, this ain't a deep drill now. No, we had to. Do we ain't the, juking. We had to do it in the hallway, so we couldn't step out. We could. There was only one way to go. <laughs> It there was are some a, looking, bad peewee coaches, bro. <laughs> Holy I, shit. I, I remember <laughs> it was my first practice my freshman year of high school. And uh, we did a tackling drill where they set up the two cones. you got to run through the two cones. That sort of drill. My coach put these two cones down probably like, I don't know, six, seven feet apart. And so I'm running through the cones. And a guy's coming at me. And I do a sidestep, get around him, and go through the cones. And my coach was mad at me. He was like, what the hell was that? That was candy ass shit. I was like, I thought you told me that the point was to get to the other side of the drill. I didn't know that he just wanted us to like, he just wanted to to sit back and watch us like collide in front of him. So well, he'd be like, yeah, yeah. Was son. that was that Mark Schlereth? That was not Mark Schlereth. Well, you no. know, you know what <laughs> no, LeBron no, he, did. Schlereth, he, he so I never played football for Schlereth. He was just my like basketball, baseball, not high school oh, okay, coach, okay. but like okay, okay, okay. you know area coach. You know, you know what mm. LeBron did in a hitting drill that his high school coach told like some reporter one time lebron just jumped over the guy yeah lebron was duking them and then he was like you gotta go straight and lebron just jumped over the guy yeah the coach got pissed but yeah they they did hate when you had to move practice inside when it, it was more of a case when it would be bad weather and somebody oh, from the basketball school, floors yeah someone from the school would have to tell them you can't practice outside today you have to practice inside so they get pissed mm-hmm. off about that but then you yeah, had to big t's point they'd be like okay we're gonna figure out who really wants to play ball Let's play inside. Just stupid high school. High school coaches, they're they're fascinating to me, man. I think like our second or third episode, we talked about some of the craziest high school football stories. Yeah. And people just sent me. If you have any good stories about your high school coach and what a ridiculous human human being they were, but you know please what? Please send them in. Like the one story that we told was the coach that faked getting shot in front of his team. Yeah. 
uh, to, to yeah. motivate them. Oh, yeah. You remember that? And then yeah. he got fired because he took like the only black player on the team <laughs> and made that guy pretend to be the gunman that came in and shot him. And then, and then after that came out, he was like, "Yeah, I, I think I got a little bit carried away with my motivation." Okay, but you know what? But you know what? I'm gonna bang for the high school coaches. I think the high school coaches are some of the better coaches out of the whole scheme of like college. Like, I think high school coaches are you know better than college coaches. I think they actually define, care more for define, the players. Define better. Define I th- better. I think they actually better? care about the kids more than like the college coaches. I think they actually care about like the development of men and like sending kids to college. And I would like, say they're not doing it for the money. They're not doing it like I mean, in fairness, they also have way fewer things to worry about. Like infinitely fewer. Well, anyway, that's just maybe my like, I don't know. Maybe that's just my experience. I would say competent, competent high school coaches can change the game more easily than college coaches can. They can get more creative with it. But there's also a shitload of just incompetent high school coaches across America. But it comes from a good place. Some of the time. Yeah. I had a pretty good high school coach. Two of them, actually. They were really good. I had one who was a fucking piece of shit. Huh. That was a weirdo. He deserves to be publicly outed. I ain't going to say his name. He's in jail and shit now for cocaine and shit. But this dude... So think about this, bro. Here's a funny story. Like, my dad almost fought him. This is a great story. All right, so... My P, my like my Pee Wee football career was just unfair, bro. Like I, I I was like five touchdowns a game type shit, right? Just obviously dominating the field. And we had one coach that that we that we were with the entire time until our last two years. The the junior year, what they call the junior year, right before they called it the senior year. Um uh we went all the way to the championship and everything's fine. The last year the guy that took over was a weirdo. This is a dude that ended up going to jail for cocaine and shit. He stopped playing me. So, like, literally, in Little League, there's this rule where you had to play 12 plays. Like, for the guys that just weren't very good but still wanted to be involved in the sports, you had to, they called them 12 play players. My last year, I was a 12 play player. Unfuck it. And everybody was like, yo, I was like, I don't know. So, my dad's like, everybody, the whole squad was like, it was just a weird thing, right? That fucking guy follows us to high school. So he's then the freshman high school coach. Senior, like I, I didn't I didn't play for some reason these just did not fuck with me. It was the weirdest shit in the world. This is why I left Albuquerque. It's and so crazy to me to think that like you got you weren't one of the best eleven high school freshman players at your school in Albuquerque, New Mexico. There's no there's without a doubt I was, right? <laughs> it was it was weird. It was just very weird. And so, and then my sophomore year, I was on JV the entire year. My brother was the running back. He wasn't even a running back. He was really good. He was a safety and a receiver, but they didn't have any more running backs. So they put my brother in there. He he played okay, but he's just not running back. They pulled my homeboy up over me, who in Little League literally was on my team. And I used to just dog people. It was was a very weird situation because that guy, that guy followed us the entire time. So, um, uh, my brother got hurt that year. He broke his femur. My homeboy got hurt. Uh, they pulled somebody else up. And I'm still on JV as a sophomore. They just did not like me. I don't know what it was. Uh, he got hurt. So they had, literally had nobody else the last three games of the season. The last three games of the season, I break the school rushing record. <laughs> the, after the last game, Wait, I had like 270. Huh? Season rushing yet record? <clears throat> Yeah, uh, no, no, no. Uh, the, the single game. Okay. Every game I played, I broke the single game <laughs> rushing record. This is funny. Now, hear this out. The last game, it was like, I don't know, 300, 200 yard, 280, 300, something like that. I can't remember. The head coach tells my dad, we still don't think he's running back material. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Jesus bro, the Christ. weirdest shit in the world. And so my dad said, fuck that. Well, then that and I was dealing with a whole bunch of off the field shit. And so I moved to San Diego, California, and and the rest is history. But it was just the weirdest set of events. That dude just had it out for me. Like literally, I know a lot of people say that, and it's like a lot of it's your fault, but he just didn't. I think in general, coaches don't like cats that speak out. And like I, I was just, I would just say what was on my mind, but not disrespectfully, because you know I was still comfortable going home, but it was just a funny. But anyway, that dude ended up going to jail for coke he was an asshole bro do you and re- he probably to this day he probably like takes credit for your career 
I bet you he says to people like, you know who I coached in high school was Arian Foster. I, I had to teach him some tough love, and I told him, listen, I'm not going to start you just because you think you're the best. I want to teach you some respect, son. And, you know, he he doesn't reach out to me to say thank you or anything. So uh, that's probably like – he probably – he, I guarantee you he tells people that story. He'd, like probably, he'd probably say to your face, if it wasn't for that adversity, you'd never succeed as much as you did. <laughs> I bet he, he's such an asshole. Yeah. What a piece of shit. <laughs> Set the score oh, rushing he's... record three consecutive games. It's <laughs> weird, bro. There's a big weirdo energy. <laughs> uh, yeah, huge weirdo energy. Um, where were we off that? We got to power through the rest Damn. of this. We got power through the rest of this. Uh, but I do want to talk about lethal it injection. Bit. Well, we can we can get to that later. But the, so so the DC snipers they end up setting up um, shop all over the DC area. They shot and killed. Uh, no, they didn't kill this kid. They shot a 13-year-old ki- kid, Aran Brown, um, when he was getting off of his school bus, walking into school. Um, and then they started leaving like tarot cards and shit behind for the police to read and leaving clues for them to say in their in their press conferences. So they would give them specific phrases like indicate that you've received this clue by by using this phrase next time you talk to the media. And there's something about, I think killers all want to be caught because why else would you start to leave all these clues unless you're going like Billy's explanation, which is you're trying to get, extract a ransom out of them. Yeah. But they're leaving behind tarot cards and stuff. So then people went from thinking, oh, is this, is this Al Qaeda to, oh, this is like a cult shit. This is Satanism. Yeah. Um, And I did, I was guilty of profiling too, because I'll be honest. Once I found out that it wasn't like Al Qaeda, this I thought it was a white guy. Like this seemed, it seems like most you know random serial killers. T- tar- taro is it Taro? I thought it was Tarot. Taro. Ta- yeah, Taro. Taro's a white guy thing. It's a, or a white girl thing. Yeah, it could have been an astrology girl. It could have been a big time astrology That's... girl. Mad hmm. dog. I don't like there you. Been any that. Yeah. woman? Also, serial don't... killers. They all get away with it because they can. They know how to clean up blood. <laughs> Billy, that's simultaneously <laughs> like very, very disrespectful, but also <laughs> kind of nice. <laughs> kind of nice, yeah. It's like they're very good at being killers. No, you're just mad because all serial, like a lot of serial killers, are white men. That no, most That's of why. most of them are. Most yeah. serial ki- serial killers are white guys. Isn't it like 98 percent are white men well, or something? You like also that? have to look at the demographics, like in America. So there are a lot of white guys in America. There's also a lot of white women, though. There are a lot of white women, yeah, but they get away with it. <laughs> that's the that's the glass ceiling that we need to break. There, there has been. I think there's been like one white woman serial killer. Yeah, uh, I need to get into the serial serial killer. Game. Well, you're from Cleveland. There was you're that one. Right there. there was no, that one girl I mean, back in like I don't remember the, the day. It was like the '90s or something like that. That she got locked up because she had HIV and was just going around and sleeping with like everybody unprotected, yeah, that's knowing Lilo. And she was like, and it's not, it was, it's not necessarily a death sentence, but that's like, you trying to kill people, fam. Damn. With there was box. A, that shit's crazy. <laughs> there was Eileen Warnos. She was a oh, female serial killer. I think she's like the most notorious serial killer that was a female in, in the United States, at least. Actually, much, what, what, what did she do? She killed, I'm trying to see how many people she's killed. I think I remember reading about her that it's not just the people that she's been caught for, but there's probably some others out there. So she was a, um, she was involved in prostitution and she would kill a lot of her clients. Hmm. Is this what that movie Monster was made for? Yeah, about? I think so. Uh, I think that movie. That was a great movie, bro. Yeah, Charlie's Theron. Mm. She yeah, played a very her. emotional movie. That shit was wild, actually. Uh, but yeah, she there, wasn't. I think if if it wasn't if I, if I remember correctly, she wasn't just out offing anybody. I think it was like, I mean, it wasn't it's a good justification, but there, she had like a reasoning. It was like dudes who were like cheating on their wives or like beating people or something like that. It was it was some it was something like that. But mm-hmm. yeah, you probably shouldn't kill people either way. Yeah, but I'd say probably not. Probably probably definitely not. Uh, but I I still do. I, it gets murky. Anyways, uh, so. They start leaving tarot cards in the woods and shit. They shut down schools, all after school activities. My homecoming was canceled. Uh, 
I know that it makes it seem like Damn. I'm being I'm being very selfish when I talk about this, but like You've this personally this, this was the experience that I that I had. They like canceled homecoming or delayed it uh, for a while. Again, like all sports activities were stopped. Um, people didn't really go outside at all. Every it's all everyone talked about. It actually it it held an entire like city hostage. Damn. For a while, it was it was pretty crazy. Were stuff. people investing in vests? That's a good question, Billy. I don't. I think people probably were wearing bulletproof vests. Probably I, just officials. Yeah, I don't recall there being anything in the news about people buying vests. Like a run on vests. Like after 9-11, a bunch of people who worked in high office buildings bought parachutes. Some people did, yeah. That's wild. Yeah, because they saw all those people jumping out of the building. They're like, oh shit, if this no, ever I'm happens not saying, I'm not, No, I'm not saying it's not justified. I'm just saying it's the, the, the fact that that is a thing is crazy. I, I remember hearing that story several times. All right, so then October 19th, Jeffrey Hopper was shot in Ashland, and the cops finally got their big clue. They found a shell casing and a message that was nailed to a tree in the woods nearby. So So they started to be able to figure out... Well, the shell casing, what they did is they referenced an Alabama murder, the first murder in Mobile, Alabama. Mm -hmm. One of the first murders, they had uh, fingerprints from mm-hmm. uh, the magazine of the gun that was used. And they traced that fingerprint to the entrance of um, uh, the immigration. Oh, where am I looking? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah look. the immigration uh, entrance of the United States of the fingerprints of uh, Malvo. So that's how they were determined. That was their first lead and big break mm-hmm. in the case. But the, the cool thing and they never caught them in the act but the cool thing uh that law enforcement did was they used a, their way to trap them was called the concentric circle plan yeah so the law enforcement they saw a pattern with the snipers shootings they realized that they were close to major roadways and that certain stores were consistent at these places they also found out that snipers were really abreast with the traffic patterns in the area they made sure to go the path of least resistance so these guys were they knew their escape the second after they made the shots think about it a shot takes less than a second they're driving right after and it takes you know maybe 30 seconds to get on a major highway and get out of there yeah if you can just get to a highway yeah. Then you're good. It's it's a lot harder to get away with it if it's in if you're deep inside of a town. Right. If there's major roads nearby, major arteries, then you can probably get away with it. And uh y- you have to think like these guys probably got pulled over a couple times because of the way that the the dragnet would ensue after a shooting, especially after the first like four shootings when something would happen and and the police would instantly know, okay, this sounds like another sniper case. Um they would set up these roadblocks nearby. I think it was called like their rapid Right. Whatever the rapid response was. Um, they probably got stopped. They probably got like somebody probably looked into their car at some point at these roadblocks and they just kept driving because they could convert their car from being like the sniper nest in the back to putting the seat up. And it looked like a normal car from the inside and their yeah. guns and shit would be in, in the, the trunk. Yeah. So they probably got stopped a couple of times because cops were, again, like me, probably thinking it was a white guy and probably thinking, OK, it's a white truck. So what they did was is they would uh, create a trap consisting of a series of widening circles around the area. Roadblocks roadblocks would be mounted everywhere with the goal of locking the snipers in a certain location. Unfortunately, the killers stayed one step ahead of the police and slipped away after every shooting. Actually, catching them was weird because they they left them. They asked law enforcement to uh, say a quote from To Kill a Mockingbird. Yep. And... Uh, so they followed the lead in which Muhammad Armavo left a note at one of the shootings to tell police to investigate the liquor store robbery that occurred in Montgomery, Alabama, not mobile, sorry, Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, they found that the suspects had dropped a magazine with fingerprints on it. Then they were identified as Malvo's whose prints were on file with the immigration services. Um, they, so then, uh, with that identification, they then knew they were connected to Muhammad and Muhammad's identifications showed that he had purchased a former police car, a blue Chevrolet Chevy Caprice in New Jersey on September 11th, 2002. Um, so then they broadcasted the public that they were looking for a vehicle that uh, for that vehicle. And they it led to the rest of Muhammad and Malvo when the car was spotted parked at Interstate 70 rest stop in Myersville, Maryland. Yep. And uh, they were prosecuted. 
they the defense tried to say that he was trying to kill his ex-wife um but in reality it was this grand door s- scheme of delusion of him creating a a camp to train homeless children to terrorize the u.s and uh muhammad's was executed uh by lethal injection he was given the option of electrocution or lethal injection he said i don't care you choose for me they chose lethal injection uh he was offered a final statement he said no and his last meal was chicken and red sauce and some cakes okay um this is when malvo tried to uh distance himself from muhammad say that he was totally manipulated brainwashed uh he had previously claimed that he was the trigger man on all of the killings because he thought this would get Muhammad out of the death penalty if he never pulled the trigger and he thought that he was unable to get the death penalty as a minor, yep. which was not true. Um, they still tried him as an adult, um, but because of the influence of him while he was a minor, he then put it all back on Muhammad, said that uh, Muhammad totally manipulated him, sexually abused him, um, and tried to say that he was just a victim himself. And... Uh, he's still in prison to this day. Denied parole in 2012. Yep. Denied parole. How much, how much do we 30. buy that he, he got denied was... parole October 30th, 2022, actually, early, oh, earlier early this year. Oh, earlier this year. Yeah. Again? So, yeah. Last time I looked was how, 2012, every 10 years. How much How much do we buy that he was, uh, like, manipulated, sexually abused, and, and all that stuff? He like was def- much... definitely manipulated. I can't... Sure. Sure. Uh, what what about the sexually abused? It sounds like he's trying to. I don't know. Just put. It I don't. Up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because what? What didn't you say? His original claim was that he was, and this is when they was already incarcerated, right? His original claim was that he was the trigger man in all the shootings. Yeah. And then when he realized that he was getting tried at adult, that's when he flipped. Yeah. You know what? I mean, it does make sense for him to try to demonize Muhammad and make himself look like the victim as much as he can to save his own skin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, who knows? Who knows? But he was definitely manipulated. He was like he was brainwashed yeah. for sure. But at the end of the day, he he shot a lot of people. They, if anything, it's like okay, this guy can be brainwashed again. And also, who knows if while you know they had they had planned out the attacks and everything. Um, like John Muhammad had like told him, this is how it's going to happen when we get caught, and you just need to tell them that you brain that I brainwashed you, and he still might be brainwashed by Muhammad. Who knows? Right. Um, I I do remember I was driving into school one day, and so the the local radio became almost like a tip line when a shooting would happen. Like at all the radio stations would kind of stop their programming. They would just take callers and be like, hey, here's what's going on in this part of town. It was like Twitter. It was like you could get like a live update from people uh, that were on the ground and what they saw, what they thought was happening. And um, I remember this one dude called up Elliot in the morning on DC 101. And he was talking about something he observed around one of the scenes of the shootings. And uh, right before he hung up, he goes, war on Montgomery County police and hangs up, right? And I remember the host of the radio show were like, wait, is this, was that the sniper that just called us up? And they had his number through like, I don't know, the caller ID. They called him back immediately. And the guy pulled, picked up the phone. He was like, did you say war on Montgomery County police? And he goes like, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like a saying on the Jim Rome show that you say when you're happy about something, you say war or whatever, which is true. Like Jim Rome, one of his sports talk radio things would be like, you know how Auburn says war eagle? Yeah. He would just be like, I don't know, war chargers. And that would just mean go chargers. So this guy. Really? Yeah. So this guy was like complimenting, being like, let's go, Montgomery <laughs> County Police. You're doing a great job. And he, he almost got caught up <laughs> as being accused of being the DC sniper. <laughs> Jim Rome. <Name> Jim Rome. <laughs> you guys are Jim Rome. Thanks, clones. Oh, no. We got a clone in prison out there. That's rough. <laughs> That's rough. Okay. Conspiracy brain. Okay. What if, what if Muhammad was really a government agent who's trying to ra- radicalize Malvo to commit terrorist attacks, and then blame it on Al Qaeda, and then justify the war in Iraq, and it just got caught up. Interesting. Just, just thought. But they didn't. So he was trying to get Malvo to shoot. Yeah, like so like, people would be afraid of just radicalize a person. 
keep keep the public in fear. Yeah, and then, and then you then can like sell the war se- to still them. Ju- I mean, we at that point we hadn't gone into Iraq yet. I mean, the second time we had not yet. We're so, we're starting to plan that out. Hmm. We're starting to make the case to the public. The timeline run, lines up. Hmm. And because I don't know, just it's historical fiction. It's probably the story they told us because, but they could have, who knows? Who knows? Who knows indeed? So that's the story of the DC snipers. It's not, it, it's not unrealistic to, to think that maybe some guy that served in the military might be serving the military industrial complex. There you go, Billy. <laughs> um, so this is going to be, this is kind of a shorter version of macro dosing today. How long was that? Like three, three hours? hours? Okay. Pretty good. Just we get in, we get out. We give you the facts. <laughs> this was a facts heavy episode, wasn't it? And we got all of them right. Uh, Bro, don't say that, Bill. Three hours is a regular episode. What is it, it is really crazy when the, I, I, the joke? I listen to a podcast and they get to like an hour and five minutes and they're like, we've gone way over our time. We'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and, and end just it. Like, and I'm just <laughs> like, when we get to an hour, we have barely like just talked about random shit that's going on yeah when we get to the hour it's all right you guys want to get into it yeah exactly. they're low energy <laughs> low energy podcasters we, we're uh we're endurance podcasters we do have an exciting month coming up the next three following weeks we have guests one oh, wow. in studio so next week is uh can we can we tease the topic yeah scientology let's go i have a lot of questions we're gonna get to the That's bottom. Right. Of the we slap. got Tom Cruise this, in studio, this baby. Yeah. We'll give you the answers. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I wish. This. Yeah, next week might actually be our last episode ever because we'll get sued into oblivion by the Scientologists. Parody law, bitches. So, um, if you want to listen, make sure to listen <laughs> next week because you won't get any more chances. All right, we will see you guys then. Love you guys. <laughs>